Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Tarkov Talk, episode two. How's everybody doing tonight? We have uh, three fantastic guests joining me for the podcast tonight. Uh, let's go over them real quick. Some of you guys may know them, may recognize them from uh, various Twitch streams. Right to, uh, he'd be right there. This man right here, we have Polar's Rage. Uh, a little bit about Polar's. Uh, I made all this up, by the way, because he didn't want to. He didn't want to tell me this. Uh, mediocre gamer uh, who spent half of his life pretending to be better at games. Look at this absolute daddy. Than uh, than he really is. It's true. And streams to entertain, and I spelled that wrong. <clears throat> I was, I was a little tired, sorry. And uh, to be a part of an awesome community, loves jerky and craft beer. I have dubbed his nickname for the night the E Girl Wannabe. Okay, hey, wait. Hey, I see your wall. I see your wall back there. Ah, uh, that's true. Fair enough. Yeah, respect. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Welcome back, Outlaw. Welcome back to 12 months. Outlaw coming in with 12 months. All right. And right below me, uh, some of you guys. If you watch my stream, you've definitely heard this gentleman on my stream before. Uh, and if you've been around a while, he's he's been around Twitch for a long time. He's been on a bit of a hiatus. Uh, but below me, we have Bowtie Antics. A little bit about Bowtie. He's been gaining, gaming since the dawn of the microchip. Former semi-pro PUBG and Ring of Elysium player. Dad, husband, all-around IT nerd. Uh, takes way too many hours to find the perfect mount sense in games. He's a bow tie aficionado. If you don't recognize my voice, here, here, I'll, 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 I'll do a demonstration. I'm dead. Yep, there Do it you is. Really what you hear? Yep. There it is. That could be any of us, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> All right, and next to bow tie and below polars, we have. King Codex, you've probably heard him. You guys may know him. Uh, a little bit about King Codex. He is a Florida man. <laughs> Hentai connoisseur. Loot goblin. Wannabe semi-pro gamer. S bartender. Friendly neighborhood rublinaire. Building the kingdom one member at a time. Uh, and I just gave him the nickname the Slumdog Rublinaire because that's what he's nicknamed himself. And I like it. It sticks. <laughs> So, gentlemen, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, before we get into this, let's just catch up on uh, on some stuff here. Uh, cares too much. Thank you for the follow, and Nitro Nummets as well. Thank you for the follow and again, Outlaw. Welcome back. Uh, hope military stuff, uh, you know, went went well, and uh, we're glad to see you. All right, so tonight we're gonna be talking about a couple things. One of them, obviously, is going to be the New or not so new, but I we weren't gonna do it right when it was super new. Uh, the new wipe, how we're enjoying the new wipe, how we're maybe not enjoying the new wipe, um, and then we're gonna be talking about uh, just the Tarkov community in general. So those are the couple of things that we're gonna talk about tonight um, as we go through the podcast. Um, we'll we'll have some conversations, and then what I'll do is we'll have a point in time where we will be able to uh, take some questions from chat after each like subtopic that we talk about tonight. Just so you guys, if you have questions, we will try to get to all your questions. So guys, welcome on in. Uh, Iron Cantaloupe coming with a thousand bits. Iron Cantaloupe, thank you very much for your generosity. Hope you're having a fantastic evening. Okay. Um, so... And then Codex, you're you're here. What are you doing? You're here. This man. I'm the flying. caboose, baby. I'm the caboose. the caboose. I'm the back of the he's, train. He's the rubelinaire, and he's apparently the 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 bidionaire. I, I I don't know what that means, but we're gonna go with it. Um, so before we get into the wipe itself, um, let's uh, do you guys think they they wiped prematurely, or do you guys think that we needed a wipe in Tarkov? I think Very it was controversial. Needed. needed. Definitely needed. I don't think it was needed. 
Okay. Good. This is controversy. I like this. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a yes and no on this one, so that's good. Yeah, I'm in between. I think it was absolutely needed if they could have provided more. What do you I mean by that? provided more? I don't think... I think they oversold the content that they added to the game and made it sound like it was going to be better than it was when it was the same wipe. It was a really drawn out pre wipe event to build a lot of hype for the same wipe that we've always got. And another shotgun. <laughs> Actually, another shotgun. Like, and I, re I really agree with that. <laughs> my, my, I guess my argument to, to why, why the wipe was necessary is because there was a huge, huge gap toward the end before they wiped of normal players that want to enjoy the game and play and do their thing and the players that had been playing since day one and had built up tons of money because there was an issue with bitcoins the bitcoin farm and people just rolling cash left and right <clears throat> you just there was that and i think that in and of itself was probably deserving of a wipe yeah that's why i definitely that's why i'm like in between i think it i think it was definitely needed but i don't think we needed a full wipe with a really drawn out event that almost promised and eh, not promised but uh gave the impression that there was going to be some more meaningful changes to the game that instead of more broken mechanics i guess but i definitely agree that that we needed something to figure out with the economy i agree with both of you like 100 percent, because you're both totally right there's no there's no sort of argument you know what i mean to counter that you i mean there totally was a problem with the economy with the bitcoin and all that shit and the people that had the money had the money and the people that didn't have the money were having a hard time enjoying the game which you know you have to conform to all player bases but then also fuller is correct there was like this huge hype like there was this big event and there was all this fun shit and you're farming in the xp and you're farming in the ruble and you're doing all this stuff i didn't really agree with like the usd event i thought that was a little cheese but i liked the bosses i liked all that stuff you know what i mean i like the idea of encouraging people to extract the scabs but i don't think that was the way to do it um but uh, I think that Polar's right, too, is like there's there wasn't a lot that happened after the wipe. OK, I got Tagilla, which I've never seen once. I'm level 40. I have never seen Tagilla one time. Um, and then also what factories like 10 feet bigger. They it's a little, made a little bit more than 10 feet. But yeah, yeah, we didn't get yeah. any major. Uh, we didn't get any of the maps that have been question marked on the on the Tarkov maps opened up again. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do agree with that. Um, I feel like the wipe was to fix a big mistake that they made, and that was with the economy. And they're stubborn. And I, I talked about this in the last podcast. Like covering their ass. They, they were so stubborn because they liked how they originally coded the Bitcoin that when Bitcoin went crazy and it inflated the economy, instead of just saying, you know what? Uh, Bitcoins are now not tied to the real world economy or, you know, we're reducing them right off the bat, which is what they ended up doing anyway. They wanted to be stubborn. They're like, well, how can we they slow down so the much. Bitcoin? They and, did and so much. They, they ruined everything that surrounded the Bitcoin when all they had to do was fix Bitcoin. And well, they could have done that early. They could have done that in in late January. Back in the day, remember when it was like 250K, like max, like over yeah. 280K or something? They should have just stuck with that, but instead they changed like 12 barters, a bunch of the things required for hideout. They like doubled the scab case requirements. They doubled the solar requirements. They did all this stuff because people had money. They're like, well, people have more money, so let's use more items. But then after they did all of this stuff and then they continued to nerf the Bitcoin, they still didn't change any of those mess ups. So they just they kept band-aiding the problem and band-aiding the problem. And then eventually said, all right, let's give it one static price and reduce it. But now it's still super hard to do all of those things, and there's not right. the economical inflation. Right. Of so, so their Bitcoin. stubbornness, kind of, and then they ended up nerfing Bitcoin anyway. But their stubbornness to to change it, they didn't they didn't revert much of that. Which I heard that they, they have reverted the the time that it takes to produce Bitcoins. Um, so it's back to where it was before last wipe. So it's back to like you can get the three bitcoins a day because now that bitcoins are less, they're okay with that. Or I don't think it's exactly right there, but they did tune buff that back up a little bit. Um, but I mean the te you still need two tetrises, which I can't you can barely can find, uh, in my opinion, and then two green batteries to get a bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. So like, yeah, they they they've they've had to do the wipe to fix that because it was already out of control 
There was no coming back from it. They they tried to. They were like, let's give money. So they created money sinks in the game with the clothing now going from 200k to 5 million, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not, I think it's not just yet, too Florida. little, too late. Yeah. Like so, when they decided to make these Bitcoin changes, it was the only people benefiting from it were already benefiting from it. And yeah. the Bitcoin trade didn't change how much they were making from Bitcoins. Right. How long it takes to make or how much it costs to build a Bitcoin farm didn't matter because those people already had max Bitcoin farms. Um, and it didn't matter how much money they had because they're still profiting from it. So it doesn't matter how much they make right. the clothes. Right. All these silly changes were just too little, too late and affecting the wrong people, I think. But, so, yeah, I agree. Yep. I think they were saving their ass. And I think it was I think the wipe altogether was was rushed because I think they really were planning a super meaningful wipe that fixed a lot of problems but they, in the game at the end of summer. And they just didn't have the time to do that because they had to save the game and save the economy. Yeah, they, they broke the game themselves accidentally with being stubborn. So they had they had to fix it. So I I, I want to say the, the wipe was needed in in that sense of it. Um, but they, I, I would have liked to see them revert some of the things that they had changed to Band-Aid stuff back to the nobody, way it used to be. Nobody's nobody can all mentioned... agree that what... Sorry, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, go right ahead, no, no, please. No, 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 you first, you first, please. I was just saying, nobody's mentioned one of the biggest changes that they made during that period of time that affected the entire economy. And it, it was like, it was like you have, a, you have a, an entire population, half of them are low income and half of them have all the money in the world and they decided to tax everybody the same rate. They did that with fuel. Do you remember fuel? Mm -hmm. it, the yeah. don't the even, cost please of don't fuel even was... Oh my God, that fuel event. That... <laughs> well, I just want to, I want to touch on this is now we can all agree that they kind of wiped to cover their ass and there was definitely a severe lack of content after the wipe. As Outlaw said, it was like a, a drop in a bucket for what people wanted, the factory right. expansion. Mm -hmm. Felt like nothing for me. Um, but touching down on that, they wanted to explore with economical situations and and they wanted to kind of explore what they could do by taking certain items out of the game and implementing new items and changing the barters and stuff. But I think on top of doing those and implementing like the fuel shortages or food shortages and stuff like that, the Bitcoin kind of ruined the concept behind those changes because of how inflated it was. Right. Um, that those those changes didn't matter because and it kind of made it no yeah it kind of made it null and void. So they were experimenting and fucking with us for no reason. Like, I'm just gonna go get a Bitcoin and I'll buy whatever I need. Um. So it was definitely just them covering their ass, and there was a huge gap, and it was frustrating for everybody, not just like I had a lot of money, and the game was still frustrating. It, you know, it was it wasn't always about that. I was yeah yeah they they like hey just, uh, we're gonna nerf things. Yet, like, Sheaf had, like, a billion rubles already. Yeah. It, like, at that point... A couple months into wipe. Yeah. I stuck with, like, 90 million consistently and never really had to worry about it. Like, yeah. once you have it that much, it's hard to lose it. It's really hard yeah. to lose it. Once you... There, there's, a, there's a point of money when you have that... A certain amount that you can re-up it pretty easily because you can buy the better gear. You're not going to get one tap by, you know ammo that pierces level four armor anymore because you're walking around with alton and slicks most of the time so yeah. you become right. part of the one percent <laughs> yeah they definitely covered their ass and it yeah. wasn't the most productive way i guess yep. i don't and i don't think that the wipe wasn't needed i think it was just rushed that's that's my feeling i think definitely it was rushed. just rushed more, more disappointing with what came with the wipe yeah. Well, look at what's happening now. I mean we're four weeks into wipe three weeks into wipe or whatever and motherfuckers are already 71 so, I mean, yeah. I, I think the player base is also kind of rushing them, too, which has to be frustrating. And I don't know what their perspective is. Oh, absolutely. Is absolutely. Between but watching somebody creators play, <laughs> and the kids that aren't creators on Reddit. Yeah. Like, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll, imagine. we'll definitely get to that. We'll get to that. Imagine later. being yeah. Nikita and watching somebody <laughs> play labs until their legs falls off to, just so they can yeah, get Kappa. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah I mean, <laughs> again, yeah. I'm I'm... We'll probably talk. We'll we'll talk about like the, the Kappa thing a little in a little while. Um, so wipe happened. You know, we've kind of discussed why we think it happened or, or why it needed to happen. Um, so now that it's happened and with the changes, um, how is wipe going for you guys? How are you guys enjoying the game? Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just, let's do this two parts. How did you enjoy the first week and a half of wipe? 
And then how did you enjoy it after that first week and a half? I'm going to let Polars go first. He looks like All he's right. ready. So uh, the first week and a half was incredible. I I was in, I was super disappointed with the wipe um, and the content brought, etc. All the stuff we already talked about. But I was having a lot of fun. I was I was it was entertaining for me. Um, we did our subathon, you know, streamed for fifty hours. Um, so I was having a lot of fun. Um, but then I went on vacation. And ever since then, it's just been rough. It's just, it's, you know, I got back and, and all kinds of problems with cheating and several, several new mechanics that were introduced that I think we're going to touch on later were, uh, you know, still ruined. Um, socials, you know, I'm on socials all the time. It's not, I just, I, I can't be on socials as much anymore. Uh, I'm just not having fun with it anymore. I'm just not having fun. I think I'm I'm disappointed in the new mechanics that are just as broken as the old mechanics that I think needed to be fixed. And that manpower needed to be put into those. But I was having a lot of fun for a week. Yeah. All right. Codex, you go next. I So, I don't know. I know there's a lot of new wipe hype. But personally, I just think New Wipe is a bunch of like really awkwardly drawn out fights, which I love the drawn out fights because nobody has good bullets. But uh, once good bullets come into play within uh, like seven days, those that stops happening. But I just get really frustrated early wipe because everybody finds really cool shit and I don't find it. Where's my <laughs> backpack with a red rebel? Huh? Yeah. Where, where's my red card in a Willer's wallet? I found, three Willer, I found three Willer's wallets. Two had yellow cards and one was empty. That was really <laughs> frustrating. Uh, but also touching on what Polar said, like there was, they, they kept at, they like, you know, new white pipe, let's add new stuff. They added shit that just didn't work. Like the Mark 47 still double draws. It still pulls oh, any, out twice. Any scav and raider or shot. Like, I've died so many times too that. Oh, that triple pen or, yeah, triple yeah, pen double, or double triple, pen. Double, triple, whatever. However but many like, times I want to pen, pen. You made this new gun and nobody played the game. Do you, I just, sometimes it just feels like they don't play the game. <laughs> Like, sometimes I think to myself, like, do you guys play the game? Like, you ever just pulled out that gun once ever and been like, well, that's a problem. Or have you ever <laughs> healed with that gun? Literally, like, <laughs> like every three times I heal with that gun, my arms get stuck behind my back or something. And I run around like a fucking hog, half roped. And <laughs> <clears throat> it just feels like, like, did you guys play the game? Or did you guys just kind of like, let's let's change the code and ship it out. Send out the product. Oh, and make sure to discount it. So... There's a new yeah. wave of white Here, names. Here's a, here's a sale. Here's the sale. There you go. It's no. what you guys are looking for. Fresh wipe just kind of feels like weird, long, drawn-out fights, and I'm not as lucky as everybody else. <laughs> I, I your, like... mechanics didn't, your mechanics didn't work. Thanks for the heat wave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like I like the early... F I feel like this wipe, the early fights, were, were a little bit weird because I felt there was a lot more server instability. Server sucked. I was teleporting. I felt like Naruto. Um, is where I remember last wipe, it the, all of a sudden the wipe came in. And all of a sudden the servers went from being terrible. They wiped and all of a sudden it was like the servers were buttery smooth for like two or three weeks. I was like, my shots are landing. When I shoot somebody in the head, they actually die. But like this wipe, it was like, mm, nah, I don't think so. I mean, I experienced it last night. The servers didn't work for like the first four days. Remember that? Like, yeah. There was like yeah. four solid days when the wipe <laughs> happened. Where like, I think I went into like, both your channels. Today? And it was like, how is Tarkov? You're like, dude, I, I've been in queue for 18 minutes. I'm like, yeah, I'm not even playing today. <laughs> oh, my God, the queues. Why did you bring oh. that up? Yeah, I, I kind of repressed those. Yeah, I pushed those oh back. Oh, my God. Yeah, I pushed those way back into the brain. Bota, how did you feel about the new wipe? I, so, so I did not play the first week uh, because I kept seeing all of the, um, the drama on Twitter. <laughs> To be honest, big brain. What a big brain. It, so I, I, you know, I watched, I watched the podcast and everything as they're, as they're getting ready to, to, you know, wipe and push it out. And then I followed Twitter for a little bit and I was at work and I kept seeing, oh, what's wrong with the servers? I saw the queue times. I saw all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to wait a week and let things calm down a little bit. Um, so when I got in, I, I honestly, I enjoyed it. Um, the the fights i like those drawn out fights i like i like the low tier ammo and and low armor and you know spending 
maybe five minutes positioning and playing chess with one person or uh, i personally like 1v2 1v3 fights where you're constantly having to to to, re to flank and, and go around them but um i enjoy that part and after oh after two weeks it's that's not there anymore it's just not people are running around with m80 or um you know lpg L lp ammo in their in their mosin and one shotting you anyways Ultra um, Nas there, dude. Well, <laughs> yeah that. um aside from that though i mean i play the game I, I i play the game maybe differently than obviously some of the, the people that are like i'm gonna rush to cap I'm, I, I play because i enjoy the uh the complexity i guess um it does get very frustrating at times um you know i used to play PUBG a lot and and other other first person shoes and they're very fast paced this game's totally different so um i know i i enjoy the beginning of a wipe i have historically um this last one it looked a little rough on twitter and i didn't participate in that because no i i i don't want to throw another monitor let the fire just <laughs> burn down just to touch on man. one thing that i liked you said is or that i agree with is um i i also really enjoy the early wipe fights i think it demonstrates someone's skill everybody's the how do i word this everybody's different skill set i think it really shows um because you know your ability to control recoil comes in a lot more your map knowledge comes in a lot more your your i mean just from flanks to pushing to to grenade pushes to being able to control this stock ak-74 to kill 305 scavs and then shoot them in the legs later but um I think your skill, everybody's skill definitely comes out a little bit more or either, whether it's good or bad. And yeah. I, I love that. I um, think it's, it's a ton of fun for drawn out fights, this shit recoil that's impossible to control, um, holding different angles. I think it's, I think it's a lot of fun. I know there's more rats. There's more people hiding with quest items, but like yeah. we all do it. I don't care who it is. I think that comes down to like an ammo problem though. Like the ballistic system just feels irrelevant after a couple of weeks because Oh totally. You can't tell me the difference between level four and level six armor when somebody's using M61. There there isn't. Isn't. The, yeah, you, yeah. You and that, that's why two, I was three shots, disappointed you're gonna die. with the wipe. Because ammo needs was, an adjustment. Oh, they wanted to draw it out more. They wanted to extend everybody wants to extend early wipe more. They said themselves that they want to focus on that and I, will I think say, though, within, within the same week, people are, are, I mean, you know, you give some of these guys three days to play and, you know, you're just dying to M61 already. BP but I think already. In, in that defense, I think for for your your non hardcore, sweaty, you know, 60 hours in the first week of white players, I think that it extends their, well, their beginning wipe out a ton. Like, like your no life players, it doesn't matter what they do. They are going to yeah. find the most efficient way to level up, and they're going to do it. Um, especially because we repeat the same tasks over and over again. These people know the tasks like the back of their head. They know where the items are. They don't even have to think about it. They don't have to look it up. They just go there. They're like, bing, bang, boom. Because this is, you know, this is what, people's sixth wipe, seventh wipe or something like that now. So they, they know these tasks, and they're the same tasks. They don't change them. They don't change the room that you have to go into and resort. So they just blow through everything. They know how to make money. They know how to be efficient, and they just they just make it happen. So, I want to comment on two things though. Is you have people like that, so they like, they tried to make the adjustments. Uh, two two of them. This wipe I want to talk on is they made flea market level twenty, so people are going to have a harder access to ammo that people are crafting or whatever, which was cool. But it makes it harder for newer players or people that are less like like you know maybe not as good at the game. Um, and then another thing they did is, if you've noticed, they've taken a lot of the BS and BT ammos off of the maps. You can't really find a box of BT ammo or BS ammo. And it's like, yeah, that's that's kind of reducing the problem, right? It's you're kind of adjusting some of the ammos you could find on the map or whatever. But like, I feel like those ammos were the ones that were really helping those new players have a fighting chance against the Chads. I, I want to call you out real it. quick. I think maybe that's just your shit luck as far as BT goes because the amount of BT that I've found is fucking ridiculous. No, I found recently. a lot initially. I found a lot initially. It's gone. I haven't played. Recently, they, they yeah. adjusted okay. it. So I've, okay. it's, so like within within the past few days, there's been a huge okay. adjustment. I've seen a lot of stuff okay. on Reddit about it. But maybe like, it's not your shit early wipe. It feels like... Yeah, early wipe, I found hundreds, dude. It was like... I was like... I had stacks and stacks yeah. and stacks of BT, yeah. but now recently, they're they're kind of trying to make the ammo change or whatever, and so they're 
reducing the amount of ammo you can find and raid and it just feels like now those people that too don't little, know too late where again. to find it uh, yeah yeah again mm -hmm. yeah too, exactly yeah, too little 100%. too late because because you know the and that no gives people a fighting chance. 855 a1 and it was like well my bt isn't 855 a1 <laughs> but you know what like if i land my shots and they miss i'm gonna win that fight and now you're like oh mm, sure. i got pp now and i guess that's okay <laughs> you know i got pp ammo i mean pp sweet. energy bro you know, so you're like, yep, forget it. 8.5 mag and shotguns, and I'm just running at people and praying. I mean, 30 um, pen, you got it. It's good, yeah, you right? Go. So I think my Our wipe is good. my wipe has been um, up and down. It started off, I I kind of did the same thing Bowtie was. I didn't play, like, first five days, I played for, like, a couple hours. I, I hit, like, pain. level three or four, and that was it. And I was like, you know what, I... I the game wasn't running good. I didn't like the queue times. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go play other stuff or just vibe and do my thing. Uh, I was busy working a lot. So I was like, yeah, the last thing I want to do is sit in 18 minute queues in front of my computer like a zombie. Um, I'm good. So I, I kind of did the same thing. And then after I got in, I, I was like first day I had like a nine raid in a row streak. And I was like, oh, this is good. This is Poggers. good. Yeah. And then. It, it was kind of like big, big streaks like that all week long. And then like the week after we hit, I hit like week two and a half. And that's when I started seeing the first people hit like 40 on social media. And then it was just like, dude, I, I would, I would play eight raids and maybe survive one and it would be a scav run. And it was like, Jesus. I uh, unfortunately sat through those queue times and learned how to make uh, many types of cheeses with the time I was given on YouTube. Um, but it definitely helped me get ahead <laughs> of the curve. Yeah. And it was like, I, I felt more comfortable shooting BP ammo at people and, you know, getting hit with PS or whatever. I definitely suffered from those queue times from day one, from the start of wipe. At you did a subathon during Six that. in the morning, I went for 50 Mad hours. Line. Okay, I took a little. I took a little nap. I'm not gonna lie. I slept on the floor behind can, me, I but mean, whatever. Subathon. I I made up for awake. it the next day. Streamed for like 50 hours. Yeah. yeah. Did you keep I track of how many raids either. you actually got in during that time? No, I should have. <clears throat> so I'm actually a little disappointed in myself. Oh, I geez. it was uh 30. Yeah, I think it was within with 30 between 30 and 40 in 50 hours. Right. I feel like I yeah. got out a lot though. I found so many quest items so early on. Like yeah, gold pocket watch. I've never had. Okay, knock on wood. I've first try every time, you know. And that's like the most one of the most hated quests. But uh, yeah, I only got like I think it was within uh, below thirty five raids, thirty to thirty five raids in fifty hours. That's crazy. because I I vividly yeah. remember, um, the next day. It was like 10 minute queue times. And in 12 hours, I got in just as many raids as I did in 50. I guess minus a nine hour nap or eight hour nap. Um, so 42 hours. Um, and then just from there on, it was just like an eight hour stream. I would get in just as many raids. So. Yeah, that's, that's <clears throat> pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've. I've backed off. I've taken the the approach of I'm going to let Tarkov come to me now. And I'm going to uh, it's a lot more enjoyable. I'm not like I'm going to get these five tasks done tonight. I'm just like, look, I I'm going to go to this map and maybe I'll get these tasks done. And if I don't get the good spawn or there's a lot of fighting there and, and I think it's a bunch of big guys that I don't want to really fight, then then I'm not going to do it like I'm trying to play a little bit smarter, play a little bit slower. Um, but, you know, like, I'm not totally shying away from fights. Bowtie and I played a couple times in the last, like, you know, f few days. And um, we did we did all right. We traded a couple times where we died. Uh, maybe him a little more than me. <laughs> but, um, you know, like last night, I, I lost one kit last night. Like, I did eight raids, lost one kit. But it was just trying trying to play smarter because things aren't readily available in the game. And I've kind of just been like, you know, I, I want to run around and get the tasks done and unlock all the traders and get to whatever. But at the same time, I'm like, what's going to happen when I have all the traders unlocked? What's left? So I'm not, I'm not going to rush it, and I've been enjoying the game a lot more. Um, 
So I think the the wipe was I had expectations. Started off strong, and then my expectations and then my gameplay or luck was like this. And then I was like super sad. And then I was like, you know what? I love Tarkov. I enjoy the game. I'm just gonna take it in smaller doses. So I continue to enjoy it. If it's like really rough and I die three raids in a row, I'm just going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do scav run. I'm going to take a break, whatever, and then come back to it because I want to leave that enjoyment level because there's no replacement for it for me. It's important yeah. not to degen. So, um, my next topic here is, uh, we were, and somebody was talking, we were talking about this in chat, scav karma. Like oh. it, love it, hate it thoughts love it it's a little broken and they needed some adjustments but i love it no uh oh he's gonna yeah, go that, that's a hot button he's leaving what's so that's it that's it scav karma <laughs> he's gone he's he's really good in. standing with fence though like i will say i had a lot of luck i had a lot of luck and i'm not gonna say you any did, more than that you did make a lot guy. of friends at interchange the gang He, I'm not going to say anywhere to Polar Scouts back because I want to push more buttons. But Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. He's he's gone. Uh, oh, he's back. Probably had to go punch a punching bag or something. How was that punching bag? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to continue. I hope you didn't wait for me. He's like a little windy. He's like, no, I specifically I specifically had to wait for you. No, I had to. I broke to. the seal Dang before simple. we started, and it's it's done. It's It's done. <laughs> scav karma um i think it's a great addition to the game but i think it was too early just in the sense that there's still too much broken to be introducing such it's not honestly scav karma is okay i think there were i think the bugs that came with scav karma just weren't thought out enough which is why which feeds into my thought that wipe was rushed um, oh like some of with... this stuff is common sense like you know i spawn in and <clears throat> at one of the night buildings and i'm immediately aggroed by the bosses so i what am i gonna do i can't run away they charge me so i try to fight and then lose it uh, or lose scav karma so i think i think it that's why i think part of why i think wipe was rushed was because just a lot of the new mechanics that they implemented were so poorly thought out such major things executed. were missed. They were and, and they were poorly executed, executed poorly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it was like one peg got all the way up to six scav karma, killed one they neutral raider, and then went to like negative six. Yeah, like yeah. What? And I and I get it. That was a bug, but they also weren't willing to fix it. I think he's still trying to get it up. They weren't willing to fix it. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I mean, but even just aside yikes. from bugs, I think it just wasn't thought out well in the sense of like we they the just raiders shouldn't aggro you right away like that's just a common sense thing that i think should have been brought up in whatever meeting room or discussion or whoever helped plan scav karma i just think that's something that should have been brought up or whether you're if you get shot at first you just can't defend yourself anymore i think that's something that should have been you know discussed when they were planning and yeah. coding scav karma just several things like that I think we're poorly executed and poorly planned. Uh, I'm telling which, you, they don't play the game. Yeah, which leads they don't play to the me, game. Th which yeah, like I said, it feeds into me thinking that the wipe was rushed, um, for a variety of reasons. But um, I think it's a really good mechanic in the game, and I think it's it's it, it has makes the game it makes scaving more fun. Even scaving's always fun just because you don't care, but I think it just adds a little bit more fun to it, especially for newer people that are still learning or something like that and content creation being able to hand somebody a, or you know doing all these trades you see all over tiktok youtube everything like all these scabs together trading items and stuff i just think it's great for content creation i think it's great for new people i think it's just a lot of fun i just think it was poorly planned and poorly executed i, um, I think this is, i'll go ahead dad yeah no go for it i was gonna say i, I think the system's fine uh, I, it wasn't at first obviously there's a bunch of problems but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and admit this. I was the person last wipe and every wipe before who would go in on their scav and try to wipe the server of NPCs and players. So it, it, for me, it's a big adjustment because 
I want to PVP on my PMC and then I want to go use my scav to PVP as well. And going into a raid and knowing that how that affects my PMC play and, and things that I'll be have or have access to, I don't know. It's okay. Um, it, it's, it's a thing for me. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. I, um, so my, my issues with it are, um, it wasn't clear and concise on, on the scav karma. They're like, this is the system. They wasn't, th that's a big thing is like, sometimes they're like, oh, we just want you to discover things. There's no patch notes. Oh, well, you give patch notes for some things, but not patch notes for other things. Well, they're like, oh, the neutral raiders, you can shoot them, but they're not supposed to aggro on you. Right. But they like sometimes I I run up to them I'm like hey what's up and they're they they're just like yo it's cool and then other times I'm like running by and they're like yeah get fucked bam shoot me in the head and I'm like what 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 is it that what am I supposed because, to do that's because there was another player scav that had caused them to become aggressive but it wasn't I'm I queued in solo why does it affect me poor system right that's what that's but why I, 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 can I can give you an answer I can give you an answer I or I can give you an answer for that one but yeah it's a poor system. I mean, um, and the shooting, my the getting shot at thing ticks me off because if somebody's terrible and shoots at me, well, I'm going to shoot back at them and then I lose scav karma. It's like, I, I got to let you shoot at me until you like hit my leg and black it out and then I can kill you. Like that's, that's not I was, cool. I was, I was you watching, don't have I was the scav karma yet to spawn in with meds. <laughs> I was watching, I was watching Pest, Pestily the other day and he was literally on factory going up the stairs backwards and then popping shots over people's heads and then turning around backwards and walking across so he'd get shot in the back and then turn around and shoot the scavs so he could get the aggression to get his scav karma up. <laughs> so, yeah, that's bait, 200 Baiting idea. people. Baiting people for scavs. Absolutely. And a lot of people Look at this absolute too, daddy. Um, Yo, thank you, Forge, for this. Sub I got I'm a little very, disappointed very that patch notes... This whole situation with patch, no patch notes aren't in the topic, so I'm going to go off topic a little bit. And can we just talk about how we feel about them not releasing patch notes to discover it on our own? Cheating. Personally, I think it's a load of hooey. I don't <laughs> think they had patch notes ready. Um, if you were watching Pastilli's stream that same night, he was getting all of the information fed to him through Discord DMs from Nikita, which I think is horse shit. Um, I, if you want to discover it on your own, Oh my and God. This, the part of this goes into a topic we have coming up in a little bit. But if you want to discover it on your own, then do it. Don't read the patch notes. That's an option. But some of us, especially people that, that you know, like to create content and, and scav karma information alone would have saved so many tweets from being tweeted and so many <laughs> posts on Reddit from being reddited. Um, just post the patch notes. So the people that want to read them can and can understand the changes. And so that the people that don't want to read them don't, they, you don't have to click the link just because they post them. I, doesn't mean you can't discover it on your own. I agree with that. I'm one of those people that like, doesn't give a shit and I won't read your patch notes. Like I just don't, <laughs> like, I don't care. I just want to shoot people and get loot. That's all I really, yeah, I just want ruble. Yeah. I, um, I wish there was at least rudimentary patch notes or like, Hey, we've, we've lately they've been like, uh, we did some server maintenance, and then you go in the game. You're like, no, they definitely changed some things. It wasn't just server maintenance. <laughs> like, yeah, what else did you guys do? That's what I mean. You and know? the patch just... notes that they released were so horribly undetailed. Nobody knew what Scav Karma was. All you knew was Scav Karma implemented or whatever it said. You know, some vague ass bland statement that was up to you to decide even though i thought that's why we waited so we could find it out and all they said were ballist various ballistic changes okay to what like that's an important thing for you know i i value that i know codex might not i value that i want to know what, Nine, if, nine, five, what baby. if and what ballistic changes were made so i can change my gameplay so i know what ammo to use or what armor to use and various audio fixes you mean east wing not working still is that the various audio changes because audio <laughs> is worse than it's ever been so what audio changes were fixed so i don't have this made up you know i just have to pre-conclude stuff in my head which frustrates me more when i go to east wing and hear somebody on first floor in the room next to me like let me know what audio changes were made 
So I don't assume you fix something valuable because heaven forbid I do that. <laughs> it's BSG. It's my own fault. I get it. I shouldn't expect that. I, I just think the patch notes were just as rushed as the wipe and invaluable almost. I think it's pretty stupid for games to not release patch notes. Like that that's just I don't know. That one kind of knocked my noodle and I didn't understand that one. But going back to the original topic of Scab Karma. Um I, actually before I go back to the original topic, yeah, fuck East Wing. Up is down, down is up. <laughs> um, outside anyway. is inside, inside's outside. It doesn't matter. Weather's just, East Wing also for all we just shoot know. just shoot everything. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. going back to going back to the, the topic of scab karma. Um, I think that it was a really important change because there were people like me who like didn't scav. I don't, I, I don't care about my scav. I don't want to scav like scaving. What I'm just going to go around and find some like half junk loot. Maybe sometimes you get that crazy. I found GPU raid, but like really for me, it's about the fresh raids. It's about pathing. It's about wiping out players trying to get into the mall or like get into the bunkers of reserve or whatever. So I never really used my scav. I didn't, I didn't use it. It was totally invaluable to me unless I wanted to fuck around. Going yeah. forward, they implemented the scav karma system, and albeit they didn't do it right, and they really fucked it up, and they really biffed it, um, I think that they're kind of working towards allowing scavs to be more uh, in tier with the lore. Yeah. Like, Fence sends scavengers out to get him things, and they're friends. They're all hired. They're all kind of paid to do things. They're just local people trying to do their thing in the the region that they've kind of been locked into in this you know special special economic zone um but i think also for new players or people that necessarily aren't that good at the game they're trying to create a safe environment where you can go in and you can make money and you can find things and enjoy the game without necessarily having to worry about everything on the map shooting at you ever all over the place mm -hmm. for a lot of people it was a painful experience there was a lot of misunderstandings on what you could shoot what you couldn't do how to use it Thankfully, again, I didn't really use my scav, so it never really affected me that much. But once I started to realize that, like, well, people are acknowledging the extracts and people are being more friendly to scavs. As a PMC, I started to, like, try to convince player scavs to leave with me on, like, interchange and on these maps. And I would find player scavs and I would come and I would come and I would come and drop them my entire backpack, have all of my loot. Take care of that curiosity that you have before you get the urge to kill me, and let's leave together. And that drastically boosted my scab karma without me even having to scab. So I, I never really had to worry about shooting raiders or shooting player scabs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But by the time I had started scabbing, I realized, whoa, I feel safe. Like I can run around, and there's people wiggling and waving and just yelling dumb shit and scatling like. Scaving, like uh, saying scav lines that I've never heard. Like scavs can sing. I've never heard that until this stuff. Yeah. And you know, uh, you, now you have scav gangs roaming around. And even as a PMC, I once managed to find an entire scav gang of player scavs and gave them graphics cards, LedX, all the, all the Tarkov Prime shit I had found in that raid. And we all left together. It was like a five man extract, me and a bunch of scavs. So like, I don't know. I've just been really open to the system, both in the scav you know, scav gameplay and as my PMC. So if I see a player scav, I'll try to be cool. Like, I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? Let's leave yeah, together. Yeah, it's cool. It? It, it's like they, they, the scav karma system made those <clears throat> those extracts relevant again, right? Because you're like, when am I going to extract with a with a scav? It's never going to happen. Now now it might happen. Um, I mean, I like, I like parts of the system. This is what I'm going to say right now. Is I think that there's plenty of people who the the either the penalty for for not participating in the scav karma system is not enough, or the reward for participating in it isn't isn't strong enough because I would say more often than not now, as where two weeks ago people were like yeah let's trade some stuff now it's like I walk up I throw something down I get head eyes with a PM pistol and I'm like oh well you know I I just gave you a gun I'm like nah I'm taking everything. And it's happened now more. I think there's a lot of more people that are like, ah, eh, fuck it. Your scav karma was cool, but like, I don't lose enough to do it. So there's a lot more people just shoot first, ask questions later, going back I to have the, not I'm clearing the map. I've dealt with it a lot. I, a today lot more I now. A dude, today I found a dude and I dropped a bandage and I picked it up and I dropped the bandage again and I picked it up because I had low health and I didn't have anything to heal with. 
And then I dropped him a gold chain and he like kind of like looked and realized what I was doing and he dropped me a car kit so I could finally heal myself. And I was like, thanks, dude. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't deal with that. For me, when I scav in, I feel like Where I'm Where were you scaving? Interchange. Okay. That's where, the, that's where the gang chills, dude. Interchange, that's the way. I'm telling you. All right. Interchange is where the, <laughs> interchange, like, don't go to reserve. You're going to die. You're also going to wait like 10 minutes. But like. Right. Right. I, I don't know. I haven't dealt with that, thankfully. When I scav in, I feel like I'm safe. When I want to just like chill, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to scav in. I'm just going to go pick up whatever people didn't find, I guess. Maybe someone didn't look high enough on the shelf and I'll find maybe, a GPU or whatever. Maybe maybe interchange is the play, but I mean, even in customs, I've been like, nope. It's been it's been 50. It was like 80-20, 80% friendly scavs, 20% you know, aggressive ones, and now it's. I feel like it's 50-50. But people will quickly learn that, like, being a bad scav makes life harder. Your scav time goes up, your kits go down, you end up looking like shit with a shit loadout, and you can't scav, and your intelligence center and your, you know, your scav case cooldown times are fucked. Like, it literally hinders everything. Like, everything in the system is designed to take out the bad players. They're trying right. to make it a safe space. Right. And if you continue to be a dick you're going to have like four hour scav timers. Like you literally have like crazy timers. So you're not going to get, be able to get into the lobby to be a dick. So like, if you find that bad apple, like once every 15 minutes or whatever, like how often are you actually scaving? Then like, sorry, dude, it happens. I feel like finding that bad scav is easier to take an L than like dying to like desync or King, dying King to like, teleporting around a map. Scav King. <laughs> for me it was almost the exact opposite like when this whole thing first came out i was like okay this is pointless obviously nobody can fucking just not shoot me in the forehead <clears throat> but then the longer like that i kept playing it got like better and better and better and now i can like almost survive a scav raid without dying in to head eyes from another scav but I guess I don't have a percentage. It it was definitely worse at me at the start of for, worse for me at the start of wipe. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I I'll say this and and Coastal just mentioned it. I think the punishment isn't enough for for shooting player scaf. It's five hundredths of a percent. Okay, I go I kill a PMC, erased it. So I, if I kill everybody on the map like Bowtie used to like to do, more often than not, it's gonna balance back out by the end of the raid. Once you get a negative karma, more scavs that are AI will attack you. Now, not only are you attacking player scavs and player scavs, but you have to attack AI, which is also going to decrease your rep. Now, bosses will attack you. If you happen uh, to kill well, a boss, that's going to drastically decrease your reputation. I, now, raiders are going to attack you. If you kill a raider, that's going to drastically decrease your reputation. Right. So that is, you know, yes, it's, it seems minute when you're killing another player scav, but once the negative effects begin, you go down a very negative fourth path where like now the ai hates you not only are you worrying about player scavs or you're trying to hunt player scavs but now the ai is like fuck you right but i'm, I'm like i'm wondering if the balance still isn't enough like i took i took took all the car extracts you, you like, get I got like 0. 0.1 or something like that for uh -huh. for killing a player as a player scav like you're, you're which i think is stuff. which i think is not gonna not... balance having to kill 10 ais attacking you Right, but I, I think like I, I killed a PMC. I saved I saved many many of my scav friends. I feel like that should be a better reward. I should get a bigger reward for killing a PMC than an aggressive scav, and you don't. I do that, agree that I, I think the uh, rewards. Well, they nerfed the rewards for one. They added this whole thing and then nerfed. I mean, even just extracting with a PMC is just that alone. They nerfed uh, to where it's literally like almost pointless. I mean, some people get good stuff, but for the most part, it's kind of... It's just a cool. dice roll. It's just I like opening it. a jacket or a duffel bag. Like, it's yeah, just a dice I, roll. I, I, you I may get think, good stuff, you may not. I guess that's why I par partially think that this whole thing was a little rushed. I think I think the rewards, <clears throat> just from just for PM, or just for scavs, because that's where a lot of the problems come into, is scavs. Like, uh, every time I ran a reserve as a scav, I killed raiders, I killed Gluhar, I killed, you know, whatever came across my path. So whether they aggro me or not, like I'm not crazy worried about it. Um, just because that's what I've done and I can do it twice a raid if I need to. If it was possible to kill Gluhar twice a raid. Um so That'd yeah, I, I think that the award 
rewards and rewards, yeah. Rewards and um penalties. Penalties are uh I, I think they could use a little bit of work, but and that would help balance out the system because I think they've been pretty pretty quick at fixing scav karma because it's obviously something they really want to implement. Wish they do that with the audio, but um or <laughs> anything. But um they're working very quickly to to correct scav karma and make it like a a real part of the game. And I think to polish it off <clears throat> <clears throat> kind of balancing out the rewards and penalties would uh yeah I, would I like i like the system i just think that it it needs yeah. a little it needs some some adjustments it needs some just if some I'm, polishing honestly if i'm not mistaken uh, as much as i enjoyed killing gluhar you know going in as a scav and finding a bunch of really cool shit uh off raiders that you could kill without penalty um i find it really interesting that now if you go up to raid bosses and you have good karma they can give you items or yeah drop loot and stuff yeah. like that like i've been dropped ifax and salewas and stuff i've been dropped ammo and you know various goodies yeah, i'm like Gluhar. just walking up and being like hey buddy and just like hanging out and they're like oh yeah you're cool like here yeah. take an ifax so like i wonder where that system could go like what are the odds that you're walking around a glue hearts like here have a lab best labs access card <laughs> you know what i mean yeah See, that's or drops I mean. a red like, card like that would be I some think... nutty shit imagine like just looking at the ground yeah. glue hearts like here's a red card just I like, just uh, think it a little bit of polishing because they've they've worked pretty quickly and and to to not only fix the bugs that came at the start, um, and and just the variety of different things, bugs and just just not blatant like just not consideration I guess of of actual things that happen in every single raid almost. Um, they've they, they were very quick to act the on those. So I think they just need to, scav karma as a whole just needs a little bit of polishing, and I think it it fits it definitely has a place in Tarkov. Um, like I said earlier, for creators, for casuals, for hardcore players, for for whatever type of player you it are, it can be fun. I think it has a really good spot in Tarkov, and it belongs. Well, sorry. Thoughts? I uh, I mean, I don't know. I, again, I, I've been playing been playing Tarkov for a while, and the that's a huge change for me with the scav is you know the scav was um you know another means to make money if you didn't want to run your pmc you jump in you have a good kit you go in with your your scav uh, and your gas mask and your loadout is a stock sa58 that shoots everywhere um but you know you run around and you don't have to worry about iding who is pointing a gun at you um you just shoot if you want to it doesn't matter so so for me it's i'm not playing my scav a whole lot right now i tarkov itself as a pmc has a big enough system and complexity to it and enough problems i don't want to go to my scav and deal with a whole new set of problems <laughs> so I mean, that's that's accurate true. on 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 that note i will say that if you run into you're running on your scav <laughs> And there's no other player scavs to interact with. It's the most boring raids in the world. You're just playing like loot simulator and then leaving because you don't want to kill AI because then you lose, etc. You don't want to kill raid bosses because you're going to lose karma. So it 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 adds some really cool interactions. But if you're not having those interactions, the scav run is like, I'm going to go to uh customs we're gonna run the dorms see if somebody left me some raider loot i'm gonna loot some jackets i'm gonna go hit some stashes and i'm gonna find my extract and that's it and i just run loot leave and it's kind of boring and but, you get I mean, that nice nine minute timer on on uh woods <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that was any sick. map for a scav for me literally it doesn't matter what map i scav what's up Shogun? it's How's 10 minutes going? plus <laughs> no mm. Yeah, there it is. Factory gate to outskirts in nine minutes. It's just W. But I will say I really like, and I don't know if it's still there. I haven't scabbed reserve in a little bit, but I liked that they changed reserve from literally scabbing in with almost forty minutes to to having to actually scavenge. Because when I spawned in on reserve as a scav with thirty five to thirty nine minutes, I could I it was just an entire PMC raid like. I had time to go loot everything. I had time to call the push the button to call raiders, wait for the train to call raiders, fight Gluhar if he was there. Like there was just it was too easy to scav reserve. Rest in peace, Dan Burgundy. But 
Um, it was too easy to scav reserve and make it three times as profitable as a, any PMC run. I mean, um, I've still yeah, that was the it. reason people made Twitter posts. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I still, I There's still scab in at like forty-one to thirty-nine minutes on reserve if I want to wait. You Do you are. have a good standing? Yeah. I've been getting. I have like four standing, and I've been getting like nine to eleven minutes. I don't know if that's because my standing is positive, but I have a one point five standing, and I consistently get a good kit. My scabs come pretty quickly. Let's see. I think it's like every twelve minutes or something like that. And I mean, I I get a good amount of time in raids. I feel like I always get like twenty five minutes or thirty minutes plus. Interesting. So I don't know. I was if that getting, has to do with I've been getting nine to eleven, and then on interchange, I get reserve times. I'm spawning in almost with players on interchange yeah that was an interchange complaint that i read that would have been a good note in the patch notes if if this whatever is happening between me and you guys if that has something to do with scav karma that would have been good to include in the patch notes but we just don't know you know what yeah, I mean? don't know you gotta figure it out think use your i'm brain, trying to man. figure it out i don't know free, free your mind polars free your mind you're right you're right i'm sorry nikita it's great great <laughs> um all right, moving on from Scav Karma, and this is a, this is, I don't I don't think this is going to be a big conversation. But what do you guys oh, think about might. um Kappa going to level seventy one? Um, expect more events this wipe. That's what I think. I think that the heat wave. I mean, I, I thought the heat wave was going to be something cool, and you were going to find more experience. But I think that this wipe, hopefully, they're encouraging um more events not just only at the end of the wipe but during the course of the wipe that can allow you to gain more experience uh by participating in those events or potentially using level 71 as some form of placeholder until future updates where maybe like say you have to go to lighthouse and speak with that trader to get your capital or something like that you know what i mean I don't know. I level 71 was... is for those sweats that like want to really 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 push it I, you know some people I, I need think... the speed run I have a theory that level 71 means expect one of the longest, longest times till you get wipe again. I think it's going to be See, one of the I'm, longest wipes. I'm in between. Possible. So I think, uh, so I think level 71, I think it's a great change. I think it should be level 71 when the game's finished. I think it should be level 100 when the game's finished. Whatever the max level is, for, if that's going to be the end game item, I think that's fair. But. I think it was too soon no. because they want it. Sorry, anonymous kangaroo is typing in this. I don't know what's happening. Um, this the 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 Google Docs. It just said anonymous <laughs> kangaroo was just typing repeated slashes, and I don't know what's happening. Oh my god. Um. Oh no, Chad's um, got setting stuff on his screen. <laughs> See, oh he's no. going again. Oh no. Uh, is it you, Dad Life? It's you, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's me. You're anonymous kangaroo. I'm All anonymous right. kangaroo. Um, it's I me. I think it's a. I think anonymous it's a great kangaroo. change, and I think it it makes a lot of sense for when the game is finished. But Unity 2019 was supposed to come at the end of summer, which is when the game was originally planned to wipe. Now it has. It's going. It's going to come before Streets. So either Streets is delayed into quarter three or four of 2022 at this point. Because it was originally slotted for quarter one or this year, quarter four of 2021. But um, so either Streets is significantly delayed an entire year again, not surprised. Um, or, and it's going to be a long wipe, or we're still going to get Unity 2019 at the end of summer. The game's going to wipe again. And I think level 71 is too early. It's it's too early to make that a requirement. Um, but I do agree that I think it might just be a placeholder for some more stuff that's coming. And I think there's going to be a obviously with this heat wave thing, as silly as it was, and once again, poorly executed. I think... Um, Who I think now? I think... <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot more events like that, which I support, which I like, which which I've been saying since I started playing this game holy shit, I've been playing for three weeks and I'm kind of bored. I've already, I'm, you know, I already got the flea because that was, I think it was actually 10 or 15 or 15 at the time when I started. Um, but I just feel like with, with their, with their, their <clears throat> timeline, 
and Unity 2019 is supposed to release be releasing at the end of summer, which is probably pushed to the end of the year. It's not that much longer of a wipe, and so I think level 71 implementing it this wipe was too early, especially if <clears throat> or or unless Streets is delayed into quarter three or quarter four of next year, then it makes sense. But yeah. So, so to touch touch on that a little bit too. I mean, so Unity twenty nineteen would be a big leap forward from the current code of the game. And the thing is, they keep releasing the content, even if they put out streets. It's not, it's not going to fix a lot of the innate problems of of the video game itself. Big issue. It, it requires a lot of performance, and the fact that the current version of Unity doesn't support multi core. CPUs, it doesn't support uh, CPU virtualization, and it's heavy CPU dependent. I don't care. I mean, you've you've seen some people out there get 3070s and 3080s, right? And what did they get? Ten more frames? Not even. Twenty more frames. 3080, and I got like three more frames, and then I dropped to 15 frames. I dropped to 15 frames and had to redo everything on my computer to get a hundred for a week. And then there was an update, Mm -hmm. and it's worse again. I'm getting. 30 to 40 with a 3080. Yeah, I'll irritate some people. I know, I know I, I've irritated uh, dad life quite a few times. I'm running a 1070 that's overclocked. It's a stock overclocked. And I get 80 to 100 FPS on every map. Same, and I'm running a 1080. Cool, you're getting double what I'm getting with a 3080. So, so here's, here's where I got the biggest boost in the game, and this comes back to the whole Unity thing. I took my i7 8700K from stock 3.5 then it burst up i overclocked it water cooled it to 5 gigahertz instant 30 fps extra on top of what i was getting see i'm at a 3080 i'm not intel i'm i'm team red uh <laughs> 3900x 64 gigs of ram water cooled overclocked my gpu's overclocked my cpu's overclocked i, I <laughs> 40 fps 50 um 60 yeah. yep. if it's you know factory or labs i have a uh 5800 x 32 gigabytes of ram and a 1080 sc uh the cpu is liquid cooled but nothing is overclocked i don't overclock anything on my system and i can get mm-hmm. anywhere between 80 to 120 frames yeah i mean the thing is so so going back to unity that would be the biggest thing they could probably give the player base is to upgrade the back end uh, and the coding of the game and a lot of the complaints about the things that happen constantly the you know your arms being like this and you can't you can't swap your gun out you can't heal you can't do this stuff and how um, can I? I mean that that's that stuff is is a problem because of it's not just your computer that's running tarkov it's the servers you're playing on that are running tarkov so that's got the same problem on the servers not just on your computer so they need they need to be able to support the newer generation of hardware at the server level to give the performance that the community I think really wants. The the level 20 cap on the flea market and the 71 cap on on that stuff. I mean that was I think those are as a as a developer if you put yourself in that in that position, it's all right, people are wanting to have more beginning game content. They like the firefights at the beginning. All right, level 20 the flea market. There you go. Uh, and then people that want to rush and get to Kappa well, here, add more 20, 20 levels to that, too. And it extends the back end of the game, the front end of the game. Hopefully, it takes some of the Twitter posts off while we figure out what we're going to release next. Yeah, that's pretty... I, and, I, and I'll say, you know, on the performance thing, and it's funny, because Shogun in chat, and I know, I know for a fact that Shogun has set up, have built several computers with a 1660 video card. And... Those people on 1080p, I believe, get like 100 to 120 frames. So yep. it's something, and it, maybe it's a Unity thing, and I'm not sure. Maybe it's the old Unity. It is. isn't isn't compatible, really, with the touring RTX cards. Because the RTX cards are trash. But if you see some of the people with the, the AMD cards, and the, some of them have issues too, but I wonder if that's a CPU issue. But then there's other people, they're making like 144 frames pegged. With, with the AMD, the higher end AMD cards. Um, I think it's a touring card issue. And I think they were like, uh, either either they can't fix it because it's too difficult, or they're just like, 
we're, when we get United Unity 2019, we'll we'll fix it then, because that's going to be a huge undertaking for them to to convert it all over. Um, because I've read the forums, because I got you know I've got a 2070, I've got the, the 3900X. Polars and I almost have the same setup, except he's got the 3080, but him and I get the same FPS, and um, it's like I've tried everything. I've tried all all of the the registry things, this that, the other thing. Tried multi core forcing, spe- picking out specific cores using things. I've tried everything, and and nothing really matters. I can ru- my game runs the same performance on on two K that it does on ten eighty p. I get sixty frames on two K, sixty frames on ten eighty, but my GPU usage it's it's at like fifty percent. Only fifty percent of my GPU is really being taxed. So there's a lot more power in my GPU. It's just not being used. So to me, that's that's a coding software where issue somewhere. That's just I get into the game, and my I like my frames when I first load in are really high, and then I can sit there and have my thing clocked up, and I can watch my GPU go and clock down to fifty percent. My frames go down to fifty percent of the frames. If I, I may ask. Is- Oh, what are the ahead. what are your what are your thermal situations like? They're like, fine. is your card thermally throttling itself? No. I mean, I ran my card at fifty five degrees Celsius. Neither my processor or uh, graphics card ever passed forty five degrees Celsius hmm. at any point streaming playing Tarkov. So when I completely reset my PC, I re- reinstalled everything. I I added a custom power supply, registries, um custom resolutions all kinds of stuff i was getting at one point for about a week i was getting like 200 to 300 frames in between there um for about a week and then yeah I mean, i'd kill someone for that not i mean, to mention windows updates but, um, <laughs> I'm not, and, then, I, I, and then ever I take since someone then, out for 300 frames in tarko yeah. 60 is the max i can get and yeah my stuff I had at one point somebody was like I had like eh, frames like I was I when I first started playing the game it was like almost to a year and a half ago I was getting like 90 frames and someone's like I'll do do the registry things you're gonna get sick frames I did the registry thing and I I did I get 140 frames on reserve which is notoriously the worst map for frames and then (laughs) all of a sudden like they they had like a patch in Tarkov and I don't know if it was a patch in Tarkov because I've rolled back my Nvidia Nvidia drivers to to that time, and then it just boom gone. So I don't know what it was, and there's nothing nothing I'm gonna do about it. And I've given up. I'm like sixty frames is what I'm playing at. I'm done. I don't look at the FPS counter. Don't look at any of it anymore. I just play the game and and. And, you know, when I get the fantastic frames, it'll be awesome. But for now, eh, I don't care. Whatever. It is what it is. Hmm. Yeah. So, but it's a, it's a, something to do with RTX cards for sure. Do you guys use any of the uh, NVIDIA Boost stuff? Like low latency and that kind of stuff? Yeah, because like, personally, like, I don't. All. I don't. I've I don't tried it that. all, turn it on, turn it off, one by one, all together, a couple. I've try it at all so yeah, i agree i think it's go? something with rtx i think it's something with almost <laughs> too much of a build for for tarkov with the current unity build to even be able to to understand like <laughs> why there's this much power to support tarkov almost <laughs> yeah the yeah. low latency mode I, I i don't i don't know who it's helping it might it, it might help some people with you know like 900 series um a or 900 series nvidia cards or you know some some earlier model uh amd cards but i i tested i did some i actually i used uh msi afterburner and reva tuner to kind of watch watch the numbers i did i got less frames on my computer using i did as well i did as well but that's why i was wondering so but you and i have 10 the 10 series so i was wondering if the boys with the beefier cards if if they asked more from their graphics cards, like, are you guys running on low settings? Like, do you know that like if if you run you know high texture settings and high shadows, high. like it's I'm going high, to be more GPU. On, yeah, no high high with 
Yeah, with I'm... my 3080, I get better FPS on higher settings. I mean, that's the whole yeah. point of the 3080 right. is you can run fully. I all my Tarkov is almost maxed out. There's a couple settings that I turn down just because I don't like the way it looks. But um, my game probably looks like dough compared to yours. When it's maxed <laughs> out, I get better FPS than I do when it's uh, right. You know, I turn settings. I turn it down. You read on Google it... says shadows to low and and render distance to low, and if I do that, I get. 15 20 frames but. yeah yeah for sure give give you this example this is a huge example of the fact that it's so cpu intensive i have sitting over here on my floor a brand new um 27 inch 1440p high definition curve monitor that i bought just because i saw it and i wanted it so i got it i plugged it into my computer didn't change a thing and so i get 80 to 100 in tarkov on every map uh, with that i was getting 60 to 80. So I lost um, a lot of frames going up to a higher resolution. So I, I swapped back to my BenQ 240, but I, because I, I can't sacrifice, I'm not used to seeing things, the motion blur and stuff gets to me anymore because I can't play on a, a, that, that lower refresh, but it is hugely CPU intensive. You would think that you would lose half of your frames by going to that resolution, but you don't. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's those things that don't make sense, right? right? You're like, you know, I, turn down stuff and uh you know i uh i turned down settings i should get more fps wait i get the same fps yeah. hey i increased my i increased uh my graphics from 1080p to 1440 i should lose fps wait i, I gained five like what why do you know if, if you lower your your fov you lose frames right. so if you take it from the max setting you take it down like 59 or something you're losing like 10 frames to be fair, I also my, think it's... I was the opposite. I also think it's something that Battlestate knows and could communicate, which they're notoriously awful at communicating. But uh, that's just a side note. Anyways, Codex, yeah. you were saying? I don't know. I feel like with the FOV, mine, always, mine, was, mine got really weird when I increased it. Like, my game just got really wonky. I, think I, mm. I I never went past like 64 or something. It's like the magic number for me. To touch on FOV, I think it's almost silly. I don't know if you guys know the red room. You know, sometimes that Bitcoin spawns on like the third shelf or whatever valuable is up there. If you yeah. lower your FOV, you can grab it. And if you raise it, you can't reach it. It's just silly. It's just... You can, you can do the slow crouch. I think if you slow crouch yeah. one tick, you can reach it. There's just so many different ways to get that thing. I just think it's <laughs> silly that 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 lowering, like my arms are longer or I'm closer to it. So I mean, I guess it, you know, as in a coding standpoint, it's probably just some some issue with coding or something, and the way it displays on your screen and in the server. But it's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. I didn't know that. That's kind I've of heard funny. some of the sites don't work right if you have your FOV too high. That used to be a thing. They fixed that. So like the um, um, the Valde and the Valde scope and stuff. If you if you modified your your FOV, um, the Valde would end up. And it was it used to be the clearest sight in the game. And if you modified your FOV, you would get a dark circle outline around the Valde. Um, so yeah, they they fixed a lot of the sights. But then obviously at the same time, I think they messed up some of them too. I think so. the optics changes this wipe were the best thing that. One of the best things that they added and and fixed this wipe. I think it was rest in peace, PK. Was <sighs> I'm right? so glad though. Like I've I've been since the last like wipe and half. I've been just like a UH1 or EOTech main. I the the XPS zero, zero. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh God! Dude, so did you see the mini IR site? Did anybody see that yet? I was looking through stuff. I'm like, there's a oh, little yeah. tiny IR site. Can you yeah. put that on the 45? It's asshole. <laughs> It's really bad. Oh, it's it's. I think the refresh rate on it is worse than the uh, what's the, not the reap the flur. It's the flur. it's bad, but but, it's, but it's, using it as a spotting, cool. a spot, yeah. as, as a as a spotting tool as a, on a forty five, and you have your regular one <laughs> regular sight on your gun. I mean, it's like forty k. Yeah. I think the optics changes were were <clears throat> months and months and months and months in the work, and that's why I think they don't feel as the, as the... rushed as everything else. The little Trigicon um, reflex sight, the little the round one, dude, the, it looks like, crisp. I mean, Dad, it's like, got was a big making window. out to it the other night. I was. He loved it well, because so because I was buying it for 12, 12 k rubles on on uh, 
on the flea, and it's got almost like the old PK PK06 dot on it. Like super crisp, super clean, small dot. Oh, that's funny. Um so yeah, I was making out with it. Okay. I don't what, care. What's the big deal? Everybody's everybody's mad about the PK06. I used it a couple of times. It was never one of my favorite sites, anyways, but what what's the big change with it? Because you can still change the dot or the reticle it, on the site. The PK06 used to be the most true site in the game. Wherever that thing was, it was hitting. If you were running around sprinting, swaying your gun, it never moved, it never faltered. Uh, like compared to other sites, when you move side to side, they kind of like wave and they like they fuck up. Didn't matter what your ergo was, you could have like two ergo on a fully built silence SA58. That PK06 was not lagging behind where you were aiming, so it was just like so true to where it was going. And the not dot was very, very, very small and crisp as well. And now yeah. it's just like a blurred red. Looks like Play Doh. The hollow yeah, sites used to be off as well. Yeah. I used to use the like the XPS three and two or zero mm -hmm. and two. Um, two I used those a lot in the past, but they used to have problems. They used to be like slightly off. You would like aim at something's head, it would go like right above their head. But um, after the update, now holographic sites seem to be the true meta. They're so I love them. The UH one and XPS, I, the XPS two or zero, either or. I like the zero better. Um, but oh gosh, they're so great. This sounds so weird. I like a really crisp small dot on my American weapons, and I like hollows on my Russian <laughs> weapons. Well, it's because they go around in circles when you shoot <laughs> yeah. the Russian guns. Yeah, Because yeah. they're going to fill that yeah. whole big dot section for sure. Yeah. I, oh, I didn't goodness. headshot you. My gun did that. Yeah, well, my, not my fault. <laughs> That's half the people that kill me. Come on, I see, I see that aim punch head headshotting me as I'm shooting you. Fuck right, off. you sh you shoot them in the chest, <laughs> and they're shooting you in the legs, and all of a sudden they shoot you. Yeah, and then all of a sudden I get head eyes. It's just like, okay, come on, dude, you got aim True punch. Pain. Good job. True pain. What if you? What do you guys think the best thing about the the new wipe is? What's mine would probably be. I really like the optics changes. Um. And I really like the optics changes. Yeah, that's 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 all he's got. That's it. Um, <clears throat> I think they did some good stuff with M sixty one or higher tier ammo not being available in traders. I think is decent. Flea yeah. market changes were okay. Oh, I loved flea market being level twenty. It actually felt like an achievement, and I liked the grind. I liked hoarding things selling things to just vendors for less because i needed the space i don't know it sucked i didn't make as much but i thought it was a ton of fun i i really liked flea market changes flea market level 20 and optics i like the flea, flea market level 22 um but I, I i feel bad because i you know i purchased eod a long time ago and i couldn't imagine um trying to keep everything that I needed in my stash to get up Baby the levels stash. and to turn all that stuff in <laughs> to get to level 20. I mean, look at dad life stash right now and he's <laughs> past level 20 has the flea market and it, and it looks worse than most standard account players stashes look like. So I, you know, you need a second junk box. <laughs> Just real I think talk. It's too expensive to upgrade your stash too. Cause I have a couple of buddies. They dropped it. On... They dropped it. They, they, okay. Ago. Cause but they're again too little, too late. They dropped yeah, it like exactly. what? It's been like three too weeks. Too late into wipe, and I get it. Going forward, it will be better. But um, yeah, I had a couple buddies that first, you know, week two that I was playing, week one and two. Oh, because I was literally at points completely out of space, and they were surviving with me. And I'm just like, how are you? What are you doing? <laughs> like it just it just didn't just make vendoring sense. everything getting an array yeah, literally all these guns. Like, well i don't have space for this gun anymore i was going to use it and it's important early wipe but i have to sell it are you aggressive though like are you an aggressive player because i got two um, i got two junk boxes pretty fast from just dog tags i'm um uh, in between like it just depends on my mood sometimes i'll be if i'm just like heavy questing i'll just be a little less aggressive i'm not going to push gun fights but if i'm like bored and you know want to go push gunfights anything i hear in the map i'm yeah i'm stupid i'll have a quest right item and i'll die I'll yeah there's several times i do too it. sometimes i just don't care and like depending on the quest i just don't care and that's all if i have a quest item that might obviously be easier than like getting a headshot for shooter or or you know shooting a fucking scav in the legs or <laughs> 
whatever you know whatever some of these quests are if if i can finish like a player killing players or pmcs or something um i'll i'll toss the quest item because i can go to that room whenever i might not run across somebody that i can flashbang oh, and shoot an or whatever key. yeah <laughs> yeah oh my god <laughs> um for the record i took that key every single time i spawned so somebody else couldn't get it that's I, what i, I do, do. I do oh that. my god i love get it. fucked buddy oh it's dark off awesome. come on exactly don't buy wow, it. we all do that we're all you can't shit. buy it but <laughs> i take it out and i go over the corner in the grass and throw it in the grass yeah. that's exactly yeah. what that i is do Chad, you. Chad is i love dead. you guys this is our bond this is our bond right here <laughs> yeah. uh, it just this made me feel so good it's almost like I used to, whenever I was mad at Tarkov, I would take a Glock 18 full auto and just go shred people. It just, Chad just the sad. sound Chad of the gun bad. releases any anger I had. So that was, that was my way of getting back at Tarkov was taking the unknown key and throwing it somewhere. Somebody couldn't get it or find mm. it. Or, or, <laughs> even, or <laughs> even better, <laughs> throwing it six feet away in the bush that they're never going to look at. The, the, right next never, to the body. They'll never see it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Truly. No. I will I, tell I, you the best way, best way to relieve tension in tar if you're really mad. I fill my rig up with grenades and then I go over to machine gun nest and I dump the grenade launcher at, at, at freaking, um, oh, what's it called? I don't know why I can't think of it now. At, um, across dorms. the map dorms yeah i don't know what i could think of it i'll yeah, dump the machine dump that dump the grenade launcher at dorms and then go over and still throw grenades through all the windows <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's toxic. how i finish my grenadier quest i literally load into factory with a black rock completely full of grenades my pockets completely full and like 10 more in my backpack and just i don't stop throwing grenades it's a lot of fun i spend an ungodly amount of money because most of the time if I spawn in glass hall or something, I just get destroyed before I can even throw a grenade, but it's yep. a good stress reliever for sure. I just do those quests naturally, like the broken arm shit and the grenades yeah. and like stun yeah. kills like I'll, those. I just kind of I'm like, yeah, it'll happen. eventually. See, I just do more grenade pushes than I do, like trying to kill someone with a grenade. So that I, last I, grenade kill, though, that last one. Yeah. Always so rewarding. Chris. Yeah. You hear it go yeah. off and then quest complete. You're like, I, just, I know yeah. I got him. <laughs> yep. I just, but for me, I just like, I use grenades more tactically, I guess, to, to push people and make them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I was level 56, 57 last wipe before I actually finished Grenadier. Because <laughs> I, I was going to do it organically too, but I never use them to get kills, I guess. Hey, quick change of topic. Going back to the, 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 this wipe and what we like about it. Have you all noticed that you get the same spawn on maps over and over again until you restart your client? Like, uh, if you, now that you if, say it, yeah, think about it. because think about I've it. complained about it several times, like, holy shit, I'm spawning here again and there I need again. to spawn on the other side of the fucking map. Yep. But that yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, I that never is noticed that. that, actually. It's kind of I, interesting. I heard oh, there's like a way Thanks to refresh follow, your Ranger. game from by going into your hideout. Like like that changes mm. something. Like when you go in between hideout to wouldn't actual... be surprised honestly. It's escape from Tarkov. And then and, and like, then the really weird spawns they have now, where like you you'll spawn right next to the stairs at Crack House on Customs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're like, uh, yeah. okay. So you what do I do now? Big red too. I absolutely. If you're solo, I've never done it in a group, but solo. I spawn inside Big Red yep. several times. It's the coolest fucking thing because nobody expects it. And I wipe two groups right away. You just, it's, you just go up to the offices, close the door, right? And I, I almost and... stay behind the forklift. I'll just stay behind the forklift. Or you can jump up on the uh, storage container that's fallen over. Shh. Jump up there. You can't do that, actually. So I peek out the doorway, the hole in the wall, and uh, kill the group that's pushing. And then I just stay behind the forklift. And then the kids just blindly run up the stairs and i just wipe them out it's yeah. i love that spawn that's just, <laughs> I mean, listen it's tarkov it's all scum. just just rush Mars you throw the unknown on. key don't yell at me <laughs> <laughs> yell cool. breezy oh my um, goodness toxic um all right yeah speaking um, of toxicity i think that's a perfect lead into the next uh yeah yeah, we can, I think it's I think it's time. All right, we can go there. Um, so that being said, a big thing, and this is a, I think this mainly goes to probably definitely on Reddit. 
and but it's Reddit, so Reddit's always toxic or can be. There's very few subreddits where you go there and you're like, man, I my day just got so much better because of all the positivity that's here on Reddit. Um, every once in a while, news. you're like, my day just got better because I saw that other people are more miserable than me. The majority um, of Reddit is is I think to ruin your mood. Like the some of the most successful subreddits are shit that upsets you. You know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Reddit's a Reddit's a bad place. Um, but I, a lot on Twitter. I've been seeing, I've been seeing <clears throat> toxicity, and then I've been seeing actual toxicity, um, in the community. And um, this happens to every gaming community. I feel like there there becomes a point where people gatekeep things, or people have strong opinions, or I think Tarkov is a very broad game. Okay, this is the preface, this, where we're going with this. There is many ways to play Tarkov, right? You can, you can be the, the bush guy, you can be the slow play guy, you can be the I'm going to W key and PVP guy, um, you can be the I'm a solo guy, or you can be the I only run with force guy, pe- group of people, right? And I think that people have very strong opinions on how Tarkov should be played now when there is no there is no rule set in Tarkov it is a open world game survival game as long as you survive at the end of the game that's the objective and no winning you know i mean you don't even have to make money you just have to survive that's the biggest thing <laughs> you know that's that's the number one thing in this game is to survive that's it survival rate is everything Polar's has muted himself Oops, I muted myself. And that's like one of the number one ways to make money is to survive. Like whenever somebody comes into chat and asks me, yeah, whenever someone comes in and says, how do I make money? I'm like, survive. Do whatever the fuck you have to do to survive. Right. Um, You don't make money yet. At all costs. Loot smaller areas. You can still find really good stuff in in areas that aren't high trafficked. I mean, if you run customs and run the left side of the map with like old gas and some of those buildings on that left side, like USEC and USEC might be a little more contested at the beginning of the game, but I've found it unlooted almost at the end of raid. I'm rushing to extract because I've been there so long, and then I'm like, oh, let's check USEC, and then I, it's it's unlooted. So um, there's so many spots in the maps where you can just be low-key and avoid PvP and survive, and you make... It's just crazy how much money you can make. Mm-hmm. So I agree. That, that, that keys into... Um, you know, uh, we, we talked about the, the wipe thing, whether we needed a wipe or where we didn't. And, and, and there's people that like, we did what, you know, st- things are, things are still broken here. They're, they're just the way the back they were before. Why did we need a wipe? Like every, all you, all you cry babies were crying about a wipe. Well, you got it. And now you're still crying that there's problems with the game. So, so go, you know, you know, like I'm, I'm right. And you're wrong. You know, sort of thing. And and then they're like, you know, and then like especially for content creators, content creators will post something like we social media, Twitter, we're not corporations here. Right? Mm. Like, I'm a person, you know, and I I mean maybe if you're Shroud or Ninja and you wanna complain, then 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 you're maybe influencing the, the game market. But if you're if you're Twitch affiliate guy or even even if you're like small twitch partner 150 viewer person and you go man i got extract camped on like five raids today f extract campers you're just venting yourself right you're just being like yo i you know i had a rough day in tarkov i'm i'm venting about it on my social media who yeah it's not even necessarily looking for somebody to agree or not they're just like this is how i air my feelings right now there's gonna be somebody that's going to comment on it and been like extra camping is part of the game. Maybe you should check your corners. Yeah. Well, maybe I should check my corners, but sometimes depending on what corner I'm checking, I'm, I'm peeking, you know, a left-hand corner. They have, I, I don't have peeker. They have peekers advantage, you know, like they're, how did you get on that power box? How'd you get up there, dude? Right. Exactly. (laughs) I mean like, yeah, check your corners. Okay. Well, let me check my corner. Let me check the power box. Hey, Oh, let me check this door frame above me that somebody had many. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> and and I get it, but somebody's like, that's a way to play the game. And it's like, yeah, okay. 
all right, fine. They're like, well, you, you're complaining about it, so you're part of the problem. What, me? I, I aired something on my Twitter or on my social media. I didn't make a documentary about it on how I want to eradicate all of the other things. I didn't po- I didn't tag Nikita in a, in a post and then say, BSG, you need to. I am a giant Tar- Tarkov content creator. I have a million YouTube followers. And you guys need to get this ready, get this out of the game right now because I don't agree that the way that it's being played. Like, it's not what they're saying. They're just like, hey, I don't like this. It sucked. Or my day was bad. And this happened. And I hate it. I hate dying to bush wookies. You know, and then somebody's going to attack them. And it's, yeah. it's, it's unfortunate because when I started playing Tarkov a year and a half ago, like, I never saw that. I never saw somebody that was on their soapbox trying to tear down other people for whatever the reason is, whether it's whether it's like they're trying to do it for clout. And, and I do see it happen. They're, they're, they go after the, the larger content creators in the community. Um, and, and, then, and then it's the people that are doing it are, uh, you know, it's like it's like, are you chasing something like what's going on here? Like, I don't what what are you trying to get across? And it's it's I see the same names on like any time one of my mutuals posts on something they had a bad day i can i can almost guarantee I can, I can count names on one of my hands that if there's going to be a post telling that person that they're they shouldn't vent their feelings there's going to be at least you know three to five people that are going to tell them that they're being toxic and they're the problem with the community like why like how, how yeah, is that? i totally agree i've can speak firsthand from Simply tweeting that I felt like wipe was rushed and I couldn't, unlike you, count on even both hands and both toes the amount of people that just lost their absolute cool. I I didn't say wipe wasn't needed. I didn't say I'm not having fun. I didn't say anything because I was having fun. I did a 50 hour stream. You know, you got to be having some amount of fun to be able to do that. And the amount of people that, that tried to make things personal, that, that just, it's, it's just, it's sad because like you, when I started playing Tarkov, the difference was people would tweet something and then there would be a meaningful discussion about that or a better a way to improve their thought or a way to or why it wouldn't work or something but instead of that anymore it's just like you said that silly gatekeeping where the way they play the way they think their opinion or anything like that is literally the only way to go about starkov and and it's the most toxic to be fair, I replied to way too many people. I'd been up for over 50 hours, over 60 hours, and was just replying to people on Twitter. First mistake, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but um, um, the amount of just like complete disrespect and and personal insults that come with it and everything like that is it's just it's sad. And I think that's part of what wore me out in Tarkov is, you know, I was on I was on vacation and whenever I'd have service, I'd you know I interact with so many people on Twitter especially. And it's just like, for one, it's so many people are impression farming because there's a few people I can think of specifically that have gone back and forth between opinions and thoughts. And, and they, they tweet something about, Oh, love the game. And they're trying really hard and, and thank you. And then the same day or the next stream or whatever, they're tweeting how much they hate the game. And, and how busted it is, and something like that, the, and and the then and of... then saying it's somebody else's fault, like <clears throat> yeah, it's it's because you guys asked for a wipe. Or... Exactly right. yeah. the amount of impression farming and blaming and accusing, and there's absolutely no constructive, meaningful discussion that happens that happened a year ago when I first started playing Tarkov. It's just not that anymore. It's just gatekeeping. It's Tarkov is literally pol- the United States politics system, and oh it shouldn't God. be. It's a fucking video game. Personally, <laughs> I don't care how you play. It's always GG's for me, unless you're stream sniping, then, you know, lick my taint. But 
Um, <laughs> it's just too political. It's just everybody's view is the right view. And if you don't have that same view, then fuck you, quit playing. And then those same guys that are having fun and making fun of you and, and saying all these insults have quit playing since then as well. So whatever. <clears throat> Say that like, I feel like, um, the problem problem right now is like Tarkov or Tarkov Twitter or whatever. is like one of two things. And it's like one, just like that said, everybody wants to gatekeep their play style. When like, if you do anything in Tarkov good enough, you're going to make Ruble and you're going to have a good time. You could be the pistoling or the hashling or even well, that friendly guy who like doesn't attack anybody. Right. He got flea market. Didn't that kill one person. Hard. Like, you know what I mean? So like you can do anything. And if you do it good enough, you're going to have a good time. It's just about learning how to do it efficiently. And, mm. you know. Yeah. Not lose and just anything. because I don't do that doesn't mean it's fucking wrong yeah. and that you're such a horrible person and that you should change your play style and your idea of not killing anybody is wrong and you're an idiot for thinking that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and... but, but then the second part is also like personal, like actual emotional, like attachment to this game. Like, so. I know that, like, you know, it's a video game. You're only supposed to play a couple hours a day or whatever. But there are people out there that play an obnoxious amount of time on this game. Like, I do it, dude. I play, like, when I look back sometimes, I'm like, damn, did I really play that long? Like, shit. Yeah, almost 4,000 <laughs> you know? hours. Like, But I'm also, like, <laughs> not going to, like, cry when the wipe happens because I lost my 350 million ruble. Like, dude, I, like, I accidentally deleted my fucking kappa. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, was like, I was like, oh, shit. I just did that. Like, I'm just going to reset my account. I gave away all my stuff. You know, but I, I don't know. My perspective has always been very different. Like, a video game is a video game. Very rarely am I going to get, like, personally offended. Like, if you do some if you do some shit and you come to my chat and you're an asshole, I'm like, all right, fuck you. Like, get out of here. But if you're on Twitter and, you know, you, like, you die to some, some player scavs because, you know, you were in interchange at, in 40 minutes and you died to a player scav. And you go on Twitter and you're like, I died to player scavs at Battle State Change. I'm like, shut up dude like i know you have an opinion and i thank you for sharing it but that one in particular was just not needed sure it's a problem like it was addressed and like yeah like they had a patch note a while back yeah. about or whatever but like bro you're playing tarkov you really think they're gonna pay attention to you like submit a report just like the rest of us put a clip in wait for them to tell you to restart your game um but just like don't be emotionally invested like you're too emotionally I, invested. Maybe I you spend too much to time say... with Tarkov to realize that it's just virtual. Like it's all pixels. It's it's not real. It's not real. I know your life or your community is built around it, but Tarkov is still just a video game. I do want to say just... that I think part of why people go straight to Twitter and and at Battlestate Games instead of reporting something like in the in the launcher or something is because the vast majority of the community has been reporting the same fucking things. And it's not even that they're not getting fixed. Like I understand net code and stuff. Desync probably won't be fixed for years. Like it probably will still be a thing when the game fully releases because that's not something that's easily fixable. Really they're probably locked into some server contracts that they can't get out of without paying. And they might have to run a couple more sales, you know, <laughs> to, to afford getting out of these contracts. <sighs> and so I get that. But it's like I think it's the lack of communication, the lack of acknowledgement, and and instead of saying, "Oh yeah, I'm sorry that we fucked East Wing Audio. We're working on it. You know, this is a pretty big problem. It's going to take us a few months to fix." They say, "New shotgun, <laughs> oh, another, <laughs> another new shotgun." And you get a shotgun, and you get. A I shotgun. hate. They say I hate the meta. So here's the MK47. Um. And instead of communicating, twice, they 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 used to too. They they go through these periods where they they're very open, and we've banned this many cheaters, and you know we've done this to RMT people, and we've taken down this many websites, and we're working on this change. But then like it's just dead silence for so long, and everybody reports the same bugs so repeatedly. I mean, how many? implementations of the hand bug when you're reloading are going to be uploaded right. that was yeah. last wipe that was four or five the, updates in a row the, and uh, we didn't know what changed we didn't know 
how long it was going to take, how many implementations. Say, hey, this is five of six, five of ten. We're yeah. working on it. This fixed a little bit of it, but they don't do that. And so we continue to report the same bugs, and everybody's like, fuck you, at Battlestate Games. I've been Actually, asking why don't, you we, to fix this why don't bug. we just start adding Pastilli? <laughs> at, well, he gets <laughs> it in his good. Discord DMs. He got it before we got the patch That's notes, so fuck. I'm telling you, we just got to start adding Pastilli. Uh, Pastilli, he's Pastilli he's got M the MP7 bug where you put a site on and then you can't use the MP7. Like, those, those oh bugs my. that, like, and then, I was in I, lab. Was that with you, Dad Life? Thanks for warning yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> that was with you guys when I had the fucking MP7. Oh my god. Yeah. I had to alt F4 like four times in a row. <laughs> and oh then god. um you know, it or or Codex sent them like 58 things of the, the flea market bug in the hideout. Forged in if he's still in chat actually found a way to fix that from inside of the game by doing something, some weird action. But like, yeah, where you sell too many things. I used to like massively hoard military tech and shove it in a junk box and then i would sell like 20 military cable at a time or whatever and then it would like glitch out and like you can't load into a raid and you can't move items in your stash or else they would do that weird like ghost dupli duplication thing and i sent them yeah. so many reports that eventually they were just like yeah restart your game and i was like i know <laughs> That's not I the bet. problem. That's what I have to do to fix it. <laughs> and I, I got it literally my lasted 20. I yeah. couldn't post three things without my entire flea market bugging, my entire inventory bugging. I couldn't click anything. I couldn't move anything. I couldn't hit back. My The post offer screen would be stuck on my screen sometimes. Yeah. Like, I um, if I posted three things, it happened. Yeah. So yeah. I And it's funny. Uh, Breezy mentioned this, too. Uh, he says, feels like if you say something, people either blacklist you because they don't agree with you or they just come at you. And I know, well, and the funny thing is, is there's the people, there's people that like are come at people. And then there's the people that like meme all the time. Codex knows exactly what I'm talking about, where this, this one person like likes to meme on everybody's I accounts. Know. And the one time Codex like says something and memes on something, somebody was like, like memed on their post. They got so pissed and blocked him immediately. Someone I had viewed regularly and gifted subs to and interacted yeah. with normally. It was like it was like a wipe thing. He was like, wipe's not happening. And I posted a screenshot of the wipe confirmation and was like, LMAO, wipe's not happening. And he blocked me for that. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> like, you, you're so personally invested. Like, he was so personally invested in wipe not happening that he was so offended by me literally saying, LMAO, wipe's not happening, quote for quote. And he blocked me. Okay, to That's be fair, I, I was a, I was on board. I did not think wipe was happening. <laughs> I just posted I'm not the block you. <laughs> until until the 100k event. I was like, no, these are these are you know something. These are building hype for the update, factory expansion, lighthouse soon. But then we got 100k repeatedly, and I was like, okay, it's wiping. This is over. This is over. <laughs> it's so, over. So, it's done. So on, on this, on the, yes. So here's the thing. Um, uh, I'm I'm the type of person I don't. I don't sit on one side of the fence or the other. I'll, I will, I will defend my opinion and stuff like that. But I also defend somebody else's opinion in the same discussion. I don't like to have arguments about things. The world right now, you know, looking at it from a bigger picture, the world is very arc. It, it's there's just so much chaos going on with the pandemic, everything else. Right? People are overly. They're not overly sensitive. They're just extra sensitive these days because you know some people that are playing Tarkov or might be in chat right now or whatever, they lost their jobs or they 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 weren't able to go to work or they're suffering because they don't have you know the money to do stuff and they're trying to make it on some kind of a social media platform or they're trying to do something as an alternate form of income and it might be streaming Tarkov, um, but there's also a lot more people at home, not out day in and day out working and then coming home tired and not playing a video game they're coming home or they're they're at home they have all kinds of energy so they're online they're reading twitter posts and because of the sensitivity around a lot of stuff they're they're gonna they're gonna respond in a very emotional manner and i think you got to take that into consideration a little bit too um on social media it it is a way for people to vent obviously their frustrations and everybody has a right to do that and also everybody has a right to respond but from a psychological standpoint if they were to come directly to you and say what they're saying on your twitter feed they're yeah you'd almost have to classify them as insane because nobody's going to walk up to you and start saying all that stuff right there's a part of your brain that that starts pushing adrenaline in your body that gives the fight or flight response and most people aren't 
going to get the fight response. They're going to get the flight response. So they're not going to do that. But behind a keyboard, that doesn't happen. Yeah. And just just with everybody at home, the pandemic, everything else that's going on, it's it's everybody is overly emotional in a lot of cases and passionate about the things that they have right now, which it might yeah. be video games is their their most fun thing they get to do. Yeah. I mean, I, I think when when we talk about the toxicity in the community and 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 I'm going to give up example and these are these are broad examples. There there's there's some definite very popular content creators in the community and they play very differently. How how say somebody like Landmark plays is different than how Clean plays, which is different than how One Peg plays, right? Those are three three larger influencers in the community. And there's people that like like to watch those people because they're entertaining and, and they even even if you don't play like that, you like to watch them because it's cool, right? And they're like it's all of a sudden they like develop this almost like cultish per, cultish sort of situation where it's like, you know, this is the only way to play because 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 so and so because clean clean said that this is a realistic game and it's only going to get more realistic. So stop complaining that you're running out of stamina because you, you think stamina is bad now. It's going to get even worse. And it's just like and let's like, look, like I, I'm just playing the game the way that I want to play it right now there's no there's no rules and and if that's what happens like whatever I'll I'll either enjoy it and adapt and still enjoy the game or or I'll move on to something else and I there there's like that cult, mob cult per, cult mentality that are like you know like the KS23 gang they're like Duh. people are like I hate the KS23 and then the KS23 gang's like well we're going to come in there and get and come get you um yes. But like, I mean, that's do. an example, but I mean, like th there's different play styles and they're like, you know, they'll come to you, you post something and they're like, Ooh, you should have W key that you would have won. Like, like landmark would have thrown a grenade and pushed that and killed all four of those guys. Like, I'm not landmark, dude. I ain't got, <laughs> I didn't stream for 12,000 hours last year. Like, geez, like, come on. Um, and, and I feel like that's kind of a toxic thing too. And I mean, like there's constructive criticism and there's toxicity and then there's like, well, you know, somebody did a video on this and, and it's like, look, I know some of the videos are, are, are like, Hey, I tried this. I did this 500 times. I, I looted 500 computers and found zero graphics cards. Okay, cool. Well then that means there's probably not a graphics nice card. Kazan video. But then there's going to be some good videos. Like, I found a graphics card. You guys are wrong. I, f I found one. And you're like, did you really, or did you not? Again, like the clout chasing, whatever. And it's just like, yeah. it's that stuff that just like drives me nuts and I see it, and I'm just like, it's it's an immaturity thing, really. Um, but it is like the, the little ga the little gangs that run around. And I know these con the content creators don't want that. They're not like, hey, guy that subbed to me for s with your Twitch Prime for six months, I want you to go around to any content creator who doesn't play like I do and go harass them in their chat or on Twitter. Like, I know that's not what they're like, you know? Um, but it happens. I mean, if somebody from my chat went into one of your guys' chat and was like, you know, like, you don't have a cool mustache. No, I'm just kidding. Like, did like, you know, that's not the way to play the game. Dad life does it better. I'd be, pay I'd be, I'd be embarrassed. I didn't be embarrassed that my community did that. And that's a sh the shitty thing. You don't have control over that all the time, you know? And I know some of those content creators have come out and been like, look, this is the way I play. It doesn't mean everybody has to play that way, you know? And I mean, we've all seen, you know, like landmark or queen or Velian or whatever comment on some of the 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 tactics in the community and the way that the game's being played and be frustrated and be like dude i've died to, i've died to like some dude camp in a corner and interchange while i'm trying to do the killer task so many times i'm frustrated i'm burned out i'm taking tomorrow off and then everyone's like oh my god they're they're like they're really mad and it's like dude they're they're they're, they're burnt they're gonna take the next day off they're going to come back and, and slay out the next day. And it's like, let's not make a like, gaslight the situation into a big ordeal. Like, hey, these three streamers are really burnt out. With the kid. And they all, they all agreed. They all agreed, but they're wrong. And I'm, <laughs> like the gaslighting in the community is ridiculous. You're like, you know, they're like, oh, yep, okay, let me get my lighter out. <sighs> I mean, throw some come on. Wood on the fire here. Look at P Pestily just streamed for like 35 days straight. And. Yeah. Yes. For a very small period of time, he was playing what Age of Empires, and yeah. there was everybody was like, "What are you doing?" Like, come on, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why are you playing Age of Empires? Yeah. Well, because, you know, you're probably bored of Tarkov at that point. Right. I think he, he tweeted something like, streamer mm. wants to take a break from Tarkov or something, and then the, the viewers, mm. you know, they have this whole... Yeah. This whole big yeah. thing. Even, just... even Papa Pesely felt the toxicity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I think part of what... Um, Maybe it's just me, but a lot of what we experience is is the mob and cult you know, mentality or whatever is very real. But I think what makes it more toxic for me is that, especially on socials as a smaller streamer, a lot of who you interact with are, you know, people you might have at one point respected. Or at, like Codex, for example, you know, spent a lot of time watching this person. And just because you have like a varying opinion... And a lot of the people you interact with are other streamers and other small streamers. Um, and like I said, people that you that you might have respected at one point also have that cult mentality. And, you know, they might like watching a bigger streamer. Or they might do something. And then it's just like you get blocked. You get, you know, these, these people that you used to respect just lose their absolute cool because you have like a slightly different way to play or, or a different opinion. Or you and, just make a joke. And so it's people that you've interacted you make with a, a joke. lot. Yeah. Yeah. Or a simple joke or something. something that has like no all I said was close. this wipe was rushed and everybody's just like, then quit. Die. Uh, some people were saying, you know, just go die, quit. Um, I told people just all I, kinds of things. And I'm like, no, I'm having fun. And, and oh, and some people were like, you obviously haven't played this wipe. And I'm like, <laughs> LOL, Keck W, I just finished a 50 hour stream. So. You know, <laughs> which foot do you want to put in your mouth first? Um, um, but yeah, I just think I think a lot of the toxicity comes from how healthy everything used to be. Mm-hmm. And everybody was respectful. And like, we all knew we were in this where there was a feeling that we were all kind of in this together. We were all going through the same misery, right. even though we have varying opinions. And now it's just like, fuck you. You're stupid. And, you know, D- it's just people you interacted with and respected that I think makes those reactions a lot more serious and, and less the, constructive. Yeah, here's here's the question. Do you think that more clarity from Battlestate, the developer, as to what direction the game is going and to what they're working on right now might eliminate some of that toxicity? Because portion of it, but ultimately people are shitty. I, I don't. I don't. I don't think it would. I Bo-tai, think. Bo-tai, wait. Botai looked like he was about to say something like 15 seconds ago, and I'm interested. Well, too. well, I was gonna say. I, I I've been I've been playing. We've all been playing games a long time. Right. I've been playing mm-hmm. a lot of games in 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 multiplayer games for a long time. I played Eve Online, and you know that it has kind of the cult mentality of Ooh. of EFT. I will tell you this: if you wanna if you wanna make EF if you wanna make the community EFT feel like it's less toxic. All you have to do is go play League of Legends for four hours with the chat on, Rust. and then come back to EFT. You're like, oh my gosh, why is everybody so friendly? <laughs> or or yeah. go or go play some Call of Duty, especially right think, now. I don't think clarity would make anything more uh, or less toxic. Uh, it's hard. It's the internet. Think, the internet's always been shitty. Yeah, multiplayer is always. Make people... Anyone play MW two? Oh, absolutely. Like I think it would make people happier and and give them a better sense of direction. But I at the same time I think it might make people more reactionary because they are gonna view this change slightly different than the way you're gonna yeah. view the change. They're or just whatever, gonna repost you know? the patch notes and be shitty about what they think about the patch notes. <laughs> yeah, 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 that could, yeah. So ultimately, um, I think it comes down to two things though. Is like one, if you don't like it, just take a break. It's okay to take a break. It's really fine. Again, it's a video game. It's okay to just touch grass. Two, um, maybe don't pay attention. Like, everybody has an opinion, and everybody's entitled to say what right. they want, and you know what I mean? Like, express right. yourself. That's fine. Life is beautiful. But also, maybe you don't need to pay attention to the guy that follows 600 people and only has three followers, because <laughs> clearly a lot of people don't give a shit about what he's fucking saying. Right. And there's there's he's definitely dick. plenty of those. And there's like, definitely plenty yeah. of those, yeah. Like, like if, if, like, you know, if I post something, and, like, Trey24K has, like, a... a you know, countering opinion. I'm like, yeah, I respect that guy. Holy shit, I'm going to acknowledge it. But if, like, some guy that has three followers is like, yo, well, this, 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 and I'm like, okay, all right. You probably yeah. said stupid shit before. 
And those are the people that do it. Those are the people that I do it. I remember when I was yeah. I remember when I was young and dumb. <laughs> I humor you to find some of these toxic replies and go to that account and then click tweets and replies and see oh. what they've replied to other people and you'll quickly realize like this that's person like, has no do all day. This person has no diversity other than spewing shit. And yeah. some people, that's just what they do their whole lives. They just this, yeah. spew shit. And that's just a part of life. That has nothing to do with <laughs> that's why, like patch yeah. notes, patch notes or a uh, lack of desync yeah. or whatever, or fixing certain there's, game issues. Never there's really three things when you toxic. when you look at that account. There's three there's three major factors. One, they follow more people than they are followed by. Which whatever, it, like that's not a huge deal. But normally it's significant, like oh, you said. Five. They follow seven hundred people and they have five followers. Two, most of their comments are replies to bashing other people's opinions. Or three, them retweeting everybody's opinions that they agree with, putting no, those opinions on pedestals. And those are those are like the the three criteria. For those those specific accounts that that we're talking about, it's like On nonstop top of like conspiracy theories and a bunch of other <laughs> <things. That was laughs> flat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think. Jeff Bezos I don't think is a Martian. It, I don't think it would make it less toxic, but I just think it would make. I don't feel like there would yeah, be as many. Would be tweets. happier, but I feel like I feel like people would be a little bit more reactionary to certain tweets, but I don't feel like there would be as many tweets because right. if I knew what was wrong with East Wing, I wouldn't tweet about East Wing um, after reporting it several times. If I knew what was wrong with the MP7 or what the plan was, I wouldn't tweet about it. So I think there would be less tweets complaining overall, but I think people would become more reactionary um, with whatever, however they perceive the. Uh, changes you know the communication however they yeah. perceive it they'll be more I, reaction about i think it. i think that it would be the community would still be just as toxic but as for for i think it would it would relieve maybe some of the pressure off content creators because they probably yeah. wouldn't make that upset tweet because they're yeah. like yeah i know they're working on it okay i'm not making that tweet today like fix this no we said we were fixing it oh yeah you're right i'm not gonna make that tweet so nobody's gonna comment and be like you're a fucking asshole oh okay well <laughs> thanks right you know yeah. so yeah. i i think if it would maybe fix a little bit of the problems just because there wouldn't be those complainy tweets there'd be less for people to uh, complain about but yeah i mean people are generally going to be toxic people are miserable right now uh like yeah. bowtie said with with covid yeah. and the pandemic and and everybody a lot of open discussion and compromise and 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 all that stuff feels really lost sometimes i mean i deal it i deal with it at work sometimes like, well, you know, you know, so and so said this. Well, you know, and and and, and they're right. <laughs> and I'm just like, I, I can give you twelve facts that you're wrong. And they're like, No, you're wrong. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. I have science that backs this up. Like, would you like to read some articles? Yeah, but science is wrong. Come on now. Yeah, science In my is, life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I actually really like what Bowtie said, and I think a lot of it comes down to just like pent up anger and right. and emotions from right. real life. And and everybody is so passionate about this game which is one thing i love and that's what has kept me playing is that i'm just so passionate about it mm -hmm. and so when i f when i or someone else finally has a release it's all the anger from and emotions from earlier this year from whatever's happened to anybody this year that's i think that's why it's so toxic right now because that's their outlet because they don't have an outlet at work they don't have yeah. One of my favorite things at work is spraying a wasp and watching him just fall and squirm and die, literally. Like, that's just anger getting wow. out, you know? But for people that are still going through shit right now, Tarkov Twitter is their release, and, and I think that's why it is important to... That's why I said I replied to way too many tweets, because it's just like... Yeah, sometimes you, know, you just have to, like, tweet it and then just never look at it Favorite again. it. Favorite you it, know? maybe. Just um, you know. There's so many variables with some of this too, and and to that point, mm -hmm. it's not just the people directly that are have been affected by some of the crazy crap that's going on in the world. It's, you know, let, let's 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 not let's not think we don't believe this. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm I'm going to date myself with some of what I'm going to say, but a lot of people <laughs> who play video games are of a younger generation. It's just what it is. Um, and those those people they might they might still live at home. Or they're just younger, and if if I, you know, I don't know what your guys' age are, but I remember when I was like eighteen, even in my twenties, 
I would get set off at the littlest thing. I mean, my temper had a short fuse on it in a lot of times. And if there was stress in my life that added on top of that, it was even shorter. So take that and then get social media without the, you know, f the actual confrontation stuff. It's easy to start typing, a, 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 you know, as many characters you can put into a tweet negativity because you're angry. Um, and then with all, with all the bugs with, with Tarkov, you know, I got, I got to talk on this for just a second. Video games today are massively complex, massively complex. I, I mean, I, I started gaming a long time ago. Dad life. I know you did YouTube. I, I you know, I don't know, you know <clears throat> what you start, you know? So, you know, I, my first video game, I, I, well, not, my first video game was like, um, it was probably Mario brothers or duck hunt on a Nintendo in the eighties. And if there was a bug in that, it would take Nintendo probably five minutes to go in and fix the pixel or something, right? It's not some long algorithm they got to fix on a thousand mm -hmm. lines of code that just affects your backpack. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's hard today. And um, Battlestate's not a huge developing company. It's not a Bethesda software. It's not a Microsoft. It's not those companies. They have limited supply of manpower. And I work in IT and I have for a long time. And no matter what you do, you only have two hands and you only have technically eight hours in the day. And if you push people over that, they burn out and they get less done. So mm -hmm. I can only imagine how Battlestate feels along with yeah. the community that wants this game to work because they don't have anything else to do because they're at home. Right. And I think I wanted to touch on something real quick too about the ages of people. I think a lot of these people are just starting to to figure, think they're figuring life out. Um, and so they're becoming more passionate. They're becoming more vocal. They're becoming more, they're just starting to kind of get into that, uh, mentality of, of being able to do that as an adult, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So, that, that, so, that, yeah. uh, especially those people that feel empowered and they're like that, that's mm -hmm. like, you talk about those, like the social justice movement. And I think there's people that are like on, like I said, on, on Twitter that like feel like they're defending battle state and it's like you know what you're actually you're actually probably part of the problem instead of the solution but the, but in their mind they're in the right and um in all of I our mean, minds we are whatever right. whatever side you're on we're right we're we're, the, we're right but i mean there's and, there's you know, there's but yeah. because they're still young yeah. it's their way of the highway is where you yeah. get older and wiser codex and i've had conversations about things before that we both disagree on numerous times um, and I think that we've both, like, like Bowtie said, we looked at both sides of each other's opinions and been like, yeah, I can see that. Oh yeah. You know what? I can see that point. Uh, mm -hmm. I can see your point too, you know, that, that these are both valid points on, on both sides and whether I now agree with him or he now agrees with me, it doesn't really matter, but it would, it's good to have a healthy discussion about something. Um, him and I have talked about like, you know, hardcore players versus casual players and, and, and you know who to cater to who to, who to cater to or you know it is the game heading in one direction or the other we've had like those conversations and um you know i think they've always been pretty constructive and yeah. there's other people that that don't that can't do that they can't they can't have that conversation isn't there there is no c constructive criticism for them um and i think that it just comes across as that you know this or this that's it and I think a lot of it comes to the growth of Tarkov too, because I started playing when it was, you know, taking off, and and since then there's been so many creators to 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 join the platform and to mm -hmm. to start playing Tarkov, which exposes, you know, the more this game gets exposed, the younger the audience is going to get. Right. I mean, that's why Codex mentioned Modern Warfare Two. You know, um, everybody had a fucking Xbox um, or PlayStation if you were the smarter one, but um <laughs> but uh, i just think i think that's part of it is i think that the a year ago the player base was older and it's just getting younger with that comes a maturity with and and being able to to see both sides of an argument is a maturity thing i think it's an experience thing um <clears throat> and yeah the younger the audience get the more gets the more i think it'll it'll 
turn into a Modern Warfare 2 voice chat when that comes to Tarkov. <laughs> oh, gosh. <All> right. so, <laughs> what, are, what are some things in, that are going on this wipe that, that you guys would like to see uh, changed? Or some, some things that you think could improve the game? East Wing. Um, uh, I mean, besides, besides the bugs uh, that we know that need to get fixed, know, what are some know, things that you think might in, improve the game? The ballistic system needs a rework, I believe, because like I said, a level four vest to a slick, you can't tell the difference sometimes if they're using a, a good bullet. Mm -hmm. um, I even had this discussion with a couple of players that I respect and that are way better than me, and they would agree. Just like yeah. ammo just doesn't feel right sometimes. Um, I don't think it has fast. for a while. <laughs> yeah, once they added things like M61 and M995, and, like M855A1 should be enough. I don't know why it's not enough well i mean that's just a busted it was enough it's not enough it was enough it's no yeah, a lot of changes enough. a lot of weird like, changes but ballistics just kind of feel irrelevant fights feel either like i win or they win like that like very rarely am i getting to like run around an object and do fun movement things and those moments when i get to like play around and have fun i really 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 love it but ballistics right. that's like when you tactically know you outplay mm -hmm. somebody but they happen to turn around just in time to shoot you with the ammo that hits you once or twice and kills you. Today I was just wearing level they four. Flicked. I was wearing level four. It was full health and got hit with one AP twenty slug today and died. And I don't know how. But like that that happened to me. One one AP twenty slug to my diaper killed me full health. I that, that mm -hmm. happened to me the other day. Um, and I was yeah. like, I was like, all right. But so that's just one of those examples of the ballistic system. Like, what caused this? What was it an overpen? Was it a like I didn't think AP20 would fragment. I don't know if it like if it's gonna you know was it sprinting? Was that? I, mean, I hate yeah, I hate to say it, but I think some of that comes down to the shitty patch notes. Um, <laughs> that, that would be something, even if you don't want to read patch notes and you're like, wait, how the fuck did I, I'm, I'm and I'm not exaggerating, I got shot once in the leg by PS ammo and it fragmented at least three to four times in every single limb. So All I'm right. just like, okay, wait, that. but like collateral, how? but yeah, in every single limb, one of them, I think my left arm, it, it fragmented 11 times. So I'm just like, I know there were ballistic changes in the wipe. So give me a little bit more information. So I kind of understand. Right. That's, that's and my thing that happening. I want to see improved <clears throat> is I'm sorry. If I get shot in the arm, it's not going to fragment into both of my legs and my arm and my chest and my pelvis and my head it's not going to happen there's not and that it, much mass in does, a bullet it's not going to kill you <laughs> you well, know but the I little mean, tiny just, piece that does make so like, it up into your collateral may refer to bleeding damage as well though if i'm not mistaken but but, but, but you have to penetrate the, the bleeding damage just i don't just get hit and then start bleeding here unless the bullet exit wounds like if the bullet hits me bounces off my co like a collarbone and then goes out my other arm that's fine but it's not gonna bounce off my collarbone and then by the way also uh i have a magnetic leg in it and then it came back down on one leg and then went out yeah, the other I don't, like it I don't doesn't think do that bullet in this uh, right designed yet that has the ability to to continue with that much energy it's, without just exiting right. especially if it has larger, enough energy to bounce around your body right. it just has enough energy to go through larger mass bullets aren't typically going to do that as much like no. a, 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 a fast bullets absolutely not the a five, slow four, heavy five. bullets not well the five the, like the five four five is a light bullet and the reason one of the reasons that they the u.s military <laughs> picked it is because when the geneva convention thing came out and it was like well you, you have to use you know um jacketed bullets well, how how are jack how can we use jacketed bullets to our advantage? You use a fast, low mass bullet that's hard. It's going to do a lot of damage because, like, if I shoot you here, it could bounce off your collarbone, and then that bullet can can go down into your chest cavity, thus doing a lot of damage. Like, if you're a hunter, you run hollow points. You shoot a deer. You blow a big hole through it. It's <laughs> gonna die because you put a wound in the backside of the deer, like the size of a softball. So. Um, but that five four five bullet's gonna bounce. Like there's there's reports of it hitting like a bone here or in the ribs and then bouncing down into like the leg cavity. But it's not gonna bounce into two legs. It's gonna hit like one one leg. I'm glad right? we decided to be nice about bullets. Straight. I completely agree though. Yeah. I think ballistics were the main thing that would make everything more understandable and less deaths. Quite. And I think that's part of the problem too. Is like you might not have died to a cheater, dude. You just got a fragment. 
17 times in your body right. and died and that doesn't mean yeah. it was a cheater right. and it might well, say head eyes is what killed you even though he shot you in like the left and, flat foot like and the other thing that they could address would be like if you shoot say uh and this is a known thing like if you shoot steel steel chest plate okay with with certain bullets those frag there's going to be depending on the kind of vest there's vests that catch that fragment and then there's vests that don't do a good job with that ceramics another one so is it is a fragment like the bullet hitting my ceramic plate and then exploding and then hitting my two arms that are like this and then hitting me in the chin because there's there's bullet fragment coming off that but it's it's not it's not fragments it's collateral damage from the left arm you know um it's not collateral damage off the the bullet chest which you know now they're gonna listen to like oh yeah now if you're wearing armor vests you're gonna get collateral damage in your face and die uh no you, but i mean you, your armor plates fall out when you when bullets fragment i think uh yeah. real quick i think a lot of this it's hard though like uh both i said earlier to be able to code that right some of this stuff like obviously i mean tarkov alone the amount that goes into like this game and right. the complexity of it is like mind-boggling just the, the ballistic system alone in its current confusing it's awesome weird state is like remarkable that the fact right. that they're able to achieve it to at this point my my so biggest I think a, thing you know a is lot of it's the it's just hard yeah i just don't think it makes sense it i think there would be a wave more information on the ammo more information on on why every single limb in my body was fragmented seven times just something to kind of make it a little more understandable then maybe i'm not screaming on twitter that i died to a cheater and he shot me three times in the face because he didn't. He shot me once in the leg and it went into my brain. But I just think it's yeah. a huge feat to come up with some of this coding that I, I couldn't even imagine. I, I don't I don't know I don't know Unity in particular. I, I can I can write programs and, and stuff, I you know, but a lot of the things that you see in um Tarkov if they're writing the proper algorithms to actually make things work, that that's just astronomical amount of coding. Most of it's got to be RNG and RNG is actual coding way of there's a, there's a, there's a built in what's called a library and it's a random number gen generation yeah. and you put a percentage with it and that percentage affects how often something might come up. Right. So when people talk about, oh, RNG killed me, no, you're right. It probably did because if you're trying, if you're trying to create a ballistics transfer from, from a bullet in a video game that's coming from a certain distance away, it hits a target that has a certain amount of durability. You subtract the durability and it goes through it, and then it fragments. Okay, that that first part of it probably not too difficult to code, but taking the fragments and and saying, okay, well, which way is the fragment going to go? And what part of the body is it going to hit? How much damage is like, no, that's not what's happening. Probably what's happening is it's pinning your armor. You got bad RNG. So instead of it fragmenting once, it's fragmented three times and you got triple damage and you're dead. And that's what happens. Right. And, and I, you know? But I think, I mean, it's, it's easy. You can, you can run that RNG, but then you can also cap it and say, well, it's limited to on said ammo. It's limited to one, one additional fragment or two additional fragments instead of, I've got hit with two built bullets and literally have 11, 11 fragments. And I'm like, <laughs> like that's that they, they it's a, if they capped it and made it a little more manageable without being like, it doesn't have to necessarily make sense. Like, Oh yes, it's all on the right side of the body or left side of the body. But it was like, at least if it was like, well, you know, three limbs got fragmented instead of, you know, 12, that would be, that would, that would make more sense to me. And that's, that's a little bit easier to code um but like i yeah if it was like ooh, let's make you know i shot the guy from the side so it's this arm this chest and that arm only available for fragmenting yeah that would be ridiculous that would this take goes back forever. to this goes back to the hardware requirements for the current engine that the game's running on you, you're you think about how much time goes between the time you walk out on customs to the time you get one tapped by the scav that's on top of the silo right there right how much time happens between that and it's not a lot and you're asking uh, servers that have how many players on them to calculate all of that information the amount of time it's needed in milliseconds um on single core or, or only physical core processing when 
you know, I know they use, they use Amazon web services for some of the servers. I don't know what else they use, but you know, all that stuff is on demand and it's multi-core, you know, virtual processors that are set up and you just, you, you can only ask so much from an old Chevy until you have to buy a new car that you want to get better gas mileage. Right. So. I like that. I like that. That's a good analogy. <clears throat> He's muted again. Polish muted. Gosh dang it. I reverse <laughs> muted. Um, um, I was going to say another change that's in the game that I think we should talk about is the, uh, the weapon jamming. <sighs> yeah. And I like that. Uh, no sense. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, I, I I'm like gonna that. I like that it can happen, talk. but I think it's, I think it's a little bit, it's a little bit overtuned. It doesn't happen to me often. But when it happens, I don't know. I don't know. Why. Are you, it King, are, are, you using, are you using new guns most of the time, King? Or are you using yeah, stuff I you've use, taken off your scav? I buy a lot of new weapons, but I, like I said, I don't scav a ton. But I, I use whatever the fuck. Like, I, I feel like if I've used a 60 durability weapon or a 100 durability weapon, like it doesn't really matter. The most malfunctions I've ever had was with a brand new MK47. And it malfunctioned three times at one raid. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? What ammo were you putting in it? BP. So it has a, what, a 60% chance to, or 60% degradation to the weapon. And I think somehow on the back end, it's probably messing with the code that says it's going to have a potential to jam more often. I mean, people wanted realism. And, you know, if you want to throw, you know, packed cartridge ammo through a gun that, realistically probably couldn't fire that many rounds of it because it's got way too it's way too high a grain um you're, you're gonna end up causing damage to the weapon so closest thing to realism for that is jam the gun and most people only get mad about it and and be like oh gosh this is happening so often because when does that jam actually happen in a firefight right and i mean you that's probably when you dying. expect it to happen you know because you're not just like blasting your gun at the ground you know so i think that's yeah definitely why the frustration comes mm. with me it was uh every single any m4 or 8r i've ever used it jams at least once every single mag um mdrs same exact whether it's a55 855 a1 995 <laughs> it's the 556 caliber specifically for me i i just don't even use anymore because every single mag it jams once or twice mm -hmm. um so i just stick with 762 because that's what i've had the best of luck with i wonder if it has to do with like a build thing or like a certain muzzle attachment or like because i know like having a silencer increases like mm -hmm. like the degree might have been both might have been maybe naked, extending the barrel or kitted. like i don't know and uh i know like m4s and whatnot in real life it's kind of true they they can jam like that um especially more than like an ak but uh yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like it. I think it's kind of fun, but I think it happens a little much sometimes. Obviously, it's frustrating, though, because like both I said, it's going to happen yeah. when you're in a firefight. Like, what, and, what and as you'd expect. I, so I, I, I think that the anger from that is kind of misplaced. Like, the, that's where it's designed to happen. If it's shooting when you're in a firefight, that's good because you're probably not shooting your gun otherwise. So <laughs> that's where it's going to come from. <laughs> Oh, I think he's pulling out something. I'm I'm a DMR type person. I prefer single tap weapons, so I'm not running around full auto spraying things all the time. So I I I've had this wipe, I don't know, two jams in total and it was always when I was using um you know a, a half durability AK of some kind is when it jammed. So, I don't know. It doesn't affect me that much, but I can definitely I see the frustration. Last wipe absolutely love the sr25 and m1a so yeah like hk's cool i used to main those but i'm a v vpo 209 person this okay. this wipe right not now me, but uh using ap ammo oh, ak103 okay. AK okay. yeah so, so i don't know yeah it doesn't affect me that much either anymore because i love the m1a and sr25 even the tx15 is a lot of fun to use i just like the way it sounds to be honest yeah. but uh um yeah yeah Dad, like, are you gonna show us a firing auto? pin or what are you gonna show yeah. us so well before we say that i had a brand new akm i went into a raid with codex it jammed three times he was he died because it jammed basically yeah. i killed 
All three dudes, but it jammed three times in one skirmish. Once every single mag on a brand new AKM. Yes, I was using PS ammo, but it was a AKM. There's a million videos online where they take military spec ammo and run five, 800 rounds through an AKM of just literally as fast as they can load the AKM, sending it down range. The barrel heats up, the barrel's glowing, and it doesn't fail. At M4, I wouldn't, you're not going to be able to do that with. AK, they are super reliable. You can throw them in the mud, you can throw them in the sand right after that. Rack it back, throw a mag in the thing, and you know what? Most of the time, it's gonna as long as it didn't come right out of the crate with all the storage grease, it's gonna shoot. So like to jam three times in ninety rounds in one fight, it's not it's it's overtuned in my opinion. Now there's different factors for that. I have two different mags here. Okay, I have a hex mag, and then I have this guy. I can't even remember which this one is. Uh, Hera, Hera Arms. So, this one has a much lighter spring rate than this one. Okay? And this one kind of, this one, but the thing is, this one kind of sticks. Okay? So, your mag could cause a misfire because it, the you don't get an, a round completely out of your mag. So, that's, there's a lot of different factors that cause misfire. There's ammo misfires and then there's gun jams i think that there's been a lot of ammo misfires versus actual like jammed around you know stove piped around in in your chamber here i don't think this is happening a lot um and i'd be curious because it just says malfunction it doesn't say what the malfunction was is it that my round didn't go off which again i watched those videos thousands of rounds and out of an ak Cra whatever crappy military surplus primers that are in those so it's like pretty much PS ammo without them jamming and I watched a bunch of these videos from the same company and they literally have the big old military spec ammo cans where they've got whatever it is 350 rounds or whatever they put in them they load them into mags and they just send it down range so I think it's a bit overtuned but there is definitely issues <clears throat> when I first built this my gas block was tuned wrong it would jam Almost every mag until I figured it out. Um, so, yes, can guns jam all the time? Yeah, but like, has it jammed since I've tuned this? No. And have I cleaned it since since then? I have like seven hundred rounds through this thing without cleaning it. It has not You're jammed. Done. But did Prapper pack all those those <sighs> bullets for you? Because I mean, that's where we're getting our ammo. Is we got this guy named Prapper, and you're buying all your ammo from him. Or off the market from somebody who picked it up in a puddle of water on right. custom someplace. <laughs> I some think this is bag. just the first iteration of weapon malfunctions as right. well. That might be why it just says weapon malfunction. I think there's right. going to be stove piping. There's going to be different right. variations. This is just what it is now. Because well, well, even right. when you clear, you don't even actually clear the round. Yeah, you, if it was you a rack dead the, round, you rack the slide a little you bit. Don't and even, you, right. you just you just right. you don't even right. actually. And clear so the that round. and so that's the thing is it like. You know, because there's different things. Like, you could have, uh, the you could go click, primer doesn't go off, that's a misfire. Shuck that round out, go to the next one. Uh, there could be, your bolt doesn't rack all the way back because your gun's dirty, or that was a light charge in that one, so now it's stove pipes, now it's jammed in your extract, you gotta pull it out, and then maybe you can't even pull up the next round, or you have to hard rack it, or bump the mag and then put the mag back in to get it, to get it out. Um... You know, or there's there's other things that could fail, like your bolt sticks or something like that. Yeah, so there's a million different ways that can malfunction, and I don't know if again coding wise, we go back to coding. How many how many ways are they gonna code a malfunction? Even just yeah, even just magazines, mm. like you mentioned earlier, being able to like, right. oh, you're using the P mag sixty right. round, and this has the spring tension of you know right. two pounds or whatever. <laughs> right, like it, the, it like would get so incredibly complex because you've got I don't even think you got Unity ammo mags and then the firearm yeah that the weight of the round the factor. spring tension so, there's just so much. i think again it's that random that random number generator and and yeah. I, I i think Bota, you'll be able to confirm me if i'm correct but like when you set that that chance i mean it could go off 10 times in a row it could go off never again 
that's how, that's kind of pretty much how those random number generators work. Yeah, um, if if you if you set it as a you know kind of a basic RNG, yeah, you're you're just you're wanting a random number between one and ten or one and fifty or one and a hundred, and yeah, right. Because like, uh, so example of my my cousin is a slot technician for um, casino, right, or a slot company or whatever, and he can go in and he can turn up that chance that the random number is going to go off the jackpot prize. But you, you can go over there for the next three weeks and pull that thing. It doesn't necessarily mean that the jackpot's going to go off. You know, even though he cranked it to 30% and every other one in the in the room is 20%, some other one in the room can win four jackpots and that one's going to win none. Because, yeah, know? it's a chance. It's it's a chance. chance. That's what it is. You have a greater chance, but it's still a chance. There's still, you know, 70% of the time it's going to be wrong. Um, So I think that... that you know, that's something they could possibly work on with that. I haven't had, and they might have already, because I haven't had a jam in a while, to be honest with you guys. And in this past week, I've, I've maybe had one or two. So maybe it already got dialed back. Again, transparency would be nice. Hey, guys, we realized the malfunctions were a little bit too much. No, so we figure dialed it out it back a little bit. <laughs> you know? Hey, so- look, the figuring it out on your own, like, if, if I don't know if any of you all played Tarkov when it literally first came out. I didn't play the. I did not play that first wipe. I started playing after that, but like the, you know, people people want to figure out how 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 to go finish a quest that kind of stuff. The forums and the online material that you have at everybody's disposal right now to figure the game out didn't exist. Right. You had no clue where to go find the pocket watch. You just had to what tr- which truck what where is that yeah, truck? Right. You know, you had to figure it out. So, right. I, you yeah. know. Yeah, I mean that's 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 true as well. I mean I, I'll agree with you because even when I started playing, I didn't know those things existed. I just stumbled around the game trying to figure it all out. And yeah, I had no idea. That, I I thought the Tarkov wiki was just some bullshit wiki. I was just like, this is dumb. Why the hell would I use it? I looked at the Tarkov wiki for the maps to find the extracts, and then uh-huh. that was it. See, I, I found didn't... mine on Reddit, but I just thought I was like, wiki Wikipedia? That's stupid. Who trusts Wikipedia? Um. <laughs> So yeah, I've learned very quickly though that that the Tarkov wiki is uh, remarkable. <laughs> well, they have in they, IO. that you know yeah. you all know they do have in game maps like you you find right. you know you can yeah. find the maps mm-hmm. and okay. you can actually well, put like... no, you can put notes on them. You can mark places where you are in game on the on the map to sh- show that you explored it. It was pretty. It's a pretty interactive system, but I think they just let it go because there's so much community created mm-hmm. content at that point. Right. It's a waste of time. See, and I didn't and know that you could do compared that with the to maps. the maps you can find on Reddit are just like that show building for building, grass for grass. Yeah, I think people were just like, why would I use so, this map? So wait, with an in game map, if you mark a location, does it save it with future maps? It saves it on your map. So it's all it's all in your character code. See, so, like I never do that, but I, I remember when I first got the game, I didn't know shit about the online resources. Like I watched like a couple of videos, I think, or tried to, but I didn't really understand the, the depth that was out there. So and I so was, I like, have running around with a map, like pulling it out, like what are, I don't even know how to use this thing. I was like, where did I spawn? Yep. Yeah, so like I have them I have one of them pulled up here right now. I mean it has a legend on it. Um you have zero you have up to a hundred markers you can put on on there and you can right click on the map and create a marker so i can create a marker and i can mark it as a point of interest a lock an exclamation mark or a question mark and then i can actually type a note on that mark too of what it is so i mean it's a pretty useful little system if, so, if somebody wanted to use it yeah i had i had absolutely no idea i just i saw the maps one time and i was like okay this is useless compared to to <laughs> compared to but I can find I mean, you know, when you're it doesn't, it. you know, when you're trying to find extracts and stuff and you can just pull it up and it shows you every stash, every extract, every everything, every key. It, uh, I had what no about, idea. What I mean, about those even... that don't have multiple monitors? You get oh, they're going to alt tab while they're yeah. running around a map yeah. all the time. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's I mean, that's and that's just like, you know, being fortunate enough to have. Yeah. To have that option and not alt tabbing in the middle of the raid, even though I will say my first raid ever i had no idea how to interact with anything because it doesn't like tell you you know i came from call of duty fortnite where it's like b to open the door and i'm just like <laughs> sitting here i literally was just pushing every fucking key until i could open the body on the guy i just killed <laughs> you know you can you could you actually have notepad a notepad in there and you can create notes and lists and everything wow. on your account as well it's on your task menu i think and I, it's, yeah it's there. yeah 
I noticed that this wipe. I think I noticed that moving something to my offline. That stupid factory. I never factory. used that shit. I never that stupid used that shit. Tarcone director's office and then factory. I was moving that to offline because I didn't want to go to factory uh, right then. Because that freaking quest. quest. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> they reduced the amount of time it takes to plant the thing on the. It's on the, so nice, um, and the gunpowder in the in the breach room. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, Th those oh, were definitely. I'm glad those, they did those things. Yeah, spending a fifth of your time in factory planting gunpowder. <laughs> yeah, so they did. They made some positive changes for sure. Yeah. Did you all notice yeah. they upped the FPS limit to 144 as well? Yes. Did they? In, from one yeah, if you go in, yep. they went from 120 to 144. Huh. Yeah. Just, just to be, just to say, hey. Dad life polars, fuck you, you'll never see this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just to rub it in your face. Cool computers, guys. Yeah, if you, and you got you got a B CPU, doesn't matter because half of your CPU power, this game can't even use it. <laughs> Get fucked. <Yeah. laughs> you know the whole the whole heat wave event. I you know, I told Dad Dead Life this the other night when we were raiding. I said, you know what? Maybe this is just Nikita's way of like putting a jab out there to everybody because obviously they pr he probably deals with a ton of stuff on social media but everybody complained about how loud the rain is right oh everybody hates God. running around with the rain so he's like you know what okay you don't want rain no water no water for <laughs> anybody here you go here's a heat wave event see how you like that <laughs> so you know. i mean figure it out. i will say fuck the rain 33% <laughs> my ass. Oh, 33% reduced? And they they said they already reduced it by like 30% in the past or accumulated 30%. I don't mind the rain. I, I, think it makes it the rain sucks. I think it makes it interesting. I hate the I rain mind, in real life. It I does. Don't, but it I makes don't mind me want it to once throw my headset while. through the window. But like, it's interesting, sure. Six, <laughs> six, six hours of straight rain or or four days of rain, it's a bit much. The rain and is cool, but I want to <laughs> take this fucking hammer and smash the shit out of my headset when I hear it. That's all I'm saying. To wear, to wear Geisha headset, and then um, if you have a yeah. mixer, a way to turn your highs up, turn that all the way up, and it sounds fantastic. I just wear a coal pack to take care of the rain. A little firefighter <laughs> helmet or something, you know? Well, you know what? Hey, hey, I know why, I know why King doesn't mind mind the rain, because he's wearing Altons all the time. Or Riz T. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we don't need to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't even I don't even remember hearing the rain at all last night. What are you talking about? Yeah, rain, yeah, the, rain. the consecutive days of rain. It's because I, I think it's still tied to the weather in Russia. I think. I don't know if they changed that or right, not. Right, but if it's like they gotta remember in the game, like it's the same as Bitcoin. Like it's a <laughs> yeah. cool novelty, but like mm, right, mm. right. Because yeah. I went last night. I went through seven days in Tarkov, and it was really uh, three hours in Russia. So their three hours of rain is seven days worth of rain, and and you know they have yeah. five days. They have you know six days worth of rain in Moscow. Well, it's Jesus, raining all white. G yeah, like <laughs> I mean, Noah might as well show up in Tarkov and build an ark because yeah. we are underwater. Yeah. All right, look, if it's based off that weather, though, where's the snow? That would be so cool. I, and I can I just they... say I do agree that the rain, Tarkov, it, the rain and the way the atmosphere and the sky changes is actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I really like the way it looks, but I really fucking hate the way it sounds. And I would love snow in the game. I would absolutely. They said love they wanted to the do game. weather events like that, like a snow weather event. They did say that. Yeah. Eventually, like they do. Personally, I think they're a little ways away. Even if it was a yeah. shit snow, though, if it didn't add my footprints, it was just you know, it doesn't have Met to be grand. Theft heavy Auto bleeding snow, on a snow covered reserve. That'd be so. <sighs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to go and raid and use your ca the camping axe to get wood to go back and put it in your heater and your, your, <laughs> that, your a heater. Out. That would be cool addition. Yes, <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, we have wait, one. There is a heating unit. There, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're gonna have to harvest. Yeah, but there's the wood not really. There's not a use for it, is there? No. Aside maybe, from expanding your hideout. Three. Mine's level three. I don't need to do it. So like maybe sure. maybe in the future nobody's gonna be able to find AK stocks because everybody's gonna be burning them for heat in their hideout. <laughs> Ooh, so many cool options here. Uh, I'm telling you, I want. I just want to tread. Start off the wipe on a hard winter. That'd be interesting. <laughs> oh that would God. be so cool. There's like very little food, very little water. And then we could use lighters. That would add use to lighters aside from shitty trades. If like stuff <laughs> is frozen closed you know like a box you want to loot it's frozen <laughs> shut you gotta like heat it up with your little lighter 
for 10 seconds or something. I don't know. Back it with your fucking melee weapon a little bit. Everybody and I think the Leatherman in the game should have a use and you should be able to take apart guns farther if you have yes. that with you. Yes, but I actually brought one into Raid and tried to just make minor gonna, adjustments and you can't. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something's real weird to happen. Um, I think it happened the end of last wipe dad life. You remember me mentioning yep. something mm -hmm. like that to you? Right. So I was in a raid on a scav and I was on customs and I got a gun out of the, the, the set, the building past the fence. And I went to, I, I was just looking at, I was going to take, I think there was a stupid side on it or something. I was going to, I took that off and then I was hovering over the stock and it said, or not the stock. It, it was, I would think it was something else on the gun, but it said requires multi-tool when I hovered over it. I'm like, hold on a minute. What? Mm. Where'd that come from? So then I obviously mm. went and tried to do it and didn't work on my PMC. I didn't even get that, that pop-up that said needs multi-tool, but I did on my scav. Hmm. Right. Which, which I think some things should be, I mean, that would be cool. And I think that would be a cool aspect of being able to, to take something off a gun that you normally can't with a multi-tool because you could break down a lot of guns pretty easy with, just popping out a couple pins. Yeah, in know? AR you can get the you can take apart right. an AR with no tools. You can take apart a Glock with no tools. You can. Right. So if we added a Leatherman for novelty, you know, right. or the multi tool, I think that would be a lot of fun. I know it takes me like probably ten seconds or less to disassemble my gun. Yeah, mine. Yeah, everything. No, on, I can, on I can take my I can right. take my Glock off in, you know, it's a second. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, that's something that I would like to see. I would like to see that. I, uh, just more use in some of the items yeah. in game, not just part of the I mean, I would, I would like to see ones. if they're going to keep the malfunctions in. I would like to see like a use for fire, fire clean gun lube. Like, yeah, like give me some more things that can make I think it so there my will be. Found that? I think there. <laughs> yeah, I did actually fight a fire clean. I think there lube. is going to be eventually when they start adding more iterations of weapon malfunctions. I think there is going. You're going to need to clean it. You're gonna to need to clean certain parts. You're gonna to need to repair certain parts, like just the barrel and you know. All, Problem all I have with the durability things. system right now is like, if you get a gun that's like 60 health, what do I need to do to make it better? Because I can change right. every part on it, but the receiver, like, I don't and know. it's still trash. I think right yeah. now it doesn't. I don't think right now you can. I think you just have to get a new gun. Yeah. Um. But eventually it will. Eventually it's like. And how come scabs always have shitty guns? First of all, you, I can't find raiders. I flip all the switches, and they don't spawn. So that's a problem. And then every scav I kill has a gun that's like held together <laughs> by duct tape and super glue. <laughs> yeah. So I end yeah. up spending like like to build the gun. Like right now, I'm, I'm just kind of fucking around and I'm messing with my presets. AK-103, AK life. But like to <clears> build a decent AK just with my traders, and I have max traders. The gun was forty-seven thousand ruble. And to get it to some like decent stats, it's an additional sixty thousand ruble. And if I found one in raid, which you're not gonna find one in raid, good luck. It's gonna be like what, fifty durability, and like not have right. a stock. Then you're gonna put they put eighty thousand worth of rubles of parts on a gun that's like ready to jam and explode in any minute. malfunction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. My VPO two hundred nines cost like one hundred and fifty k. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I think the I don't use VPOs, dude. Negative. I think repairing the weapon before I think before these other iterations are added where you can just fix the barrel or fix the trigger or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think right now repairing the weapon needs to take care of it for the most part and make it healthier until they can add the ability to just swap the barrel or whatever. Because yeah. right now you repair a gun that was at 100, you got out of raid and it's at 60 and you repair it and it's fucked. It's just it's. Yeah, you might well. the, the durability burn part. on the guns is ridiculous. Too. Yeah, so I, I think fired two mags. You, I lost. For now, when you repair the gun, I think it should durability. fix. It should fix a lot of the issues when you repair the gun for now, and then when they implement the ability to change certain parts, take that away, and then you have to repair the parts individually. Yeah, I mean, give, give me give me gun melee before you know my buttstock breaks on my gun. Like Jesus, <laughs> at least the, the at least. I was just looking at dead life. The TKM APM ammo, which I use all, all the, the gun I've, I've been playing with, it has plus 90% durability burn. Gee. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's ridiculous. I don't, even, I don't even look at that stuff, dude. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I used to play I EFT. To. I look at every number. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to, dude. I don't want to look because I'll just get upset. 
Yeah. Ignorance is bliss in that one, dude. If I can just run around and W, like, I just know that if I have a flashlight on, I'm blinding whoever's looking at it, and good ammo is good ammo. I really okay. don't want to know. I don't want to know what my mods are doing because then I'll just be mad that I made a good gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. We're gonna. We're getting. We're getting close to quitting time here. I want to ask chat. Chat, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> When we finish BSing, uh, of any of the things that we want to talk about, or any of the questions for something that you guys want to know, what our opinion is, um, before we we get ready to wrap this up. Anybody, Bueller? I'll give you guys a couple minutes. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of cool things they could do with the durability. I mean, I I would love to see something like different plate, different plate carrier styles where you just replace the plate. You know, depending on. Uh, I think on that's stuff. coming. Replaceable armor plates is coming. I can't wait for custom rigs, personally. I that's going to... I'll be excited. Too big for you, Codex. Too big for you. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. All right. Um, all right. So, we're going to uh, we're gonna get ready to wrap it up here. Before we wrap it up, I am going to uh, try, not, try to uh, do this real quick. That's not it. See if I can do this here. No, nope, see it. I don't know what that fucking thing is. I don't know we did. You know, we that. didn't talk about the other hot button topic that I know happens quite a bit, really. But mm -hmm. that's a long combo. That uh, <clears throat> cheating. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I think that's they just to it. They need to install a kernel zero above administration privilege grade anti cheat software like Valorant has. They never should have gone with Battleye. Battleye doesn't work with Unity. Battleye I'm pretty sure that's shit. in the terms of service is that it doesn't work with Unity. And they're like, oh shit, Battleye. Well, like everyone was okay with Valorant having a kernel zero program like that runs off of the start of your computer. When you start your computer and you have Valorant, that program is starting and it is vanguarding all of your fucking shit and looking and making sure you're not cheating. Given mm -hmm. they're still cheaters, but people pay a lot of money to get banned the next day because it's. Except a I will say, have you guys heard about the cheats that are AI and literally undetectable? Like the second computer ones. Uh, you can do it from pretty much anything. You can do it from a cell phone. You you can do it from pretty much anything and it's completely undetectable it I don't just uses it. it uses ai to learn right. the movement <clears throat> on the screen from players and then it just locks onto it and shoots it but it's not operating on your computer it can operate from a phone tablet literally anything cool um, now everybody in chat is going to search that <laughs> now we just no, created actually Power actually Cheaters. there was a big post about it and activision wiped it from the internet they spent like several million dollars and wiped it from the internet all the discord servers are gone all the the websites the, the oh so so they're gonna they're gonna print so instead of they're horrified instead yeah instead of putting anti-cheat in the game they're just going to pretend that cheats don't exist by paying money well, to do the that point instead is, of finding it anti -cheat. what anti-cheat you have because because they can use ai to learn your eye movement they can use AI to learn where the way players move, and it's it's undetectable. It's not a program. It's not anything that's running in the background. It's just like AI that's running on a oh, tablet. Let and me tell you, I am not putting that sort of advanced AI on my cell phone, right? So I can cheat right. in a video game, dude. That is some scary right. shit. Now it that is, thing knows. It can do. Now it knows where I sleep. <laughs> and when the the robot armies come, they're gonna and when know your dog all about gets me. Up, it's auto locking onto that. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, the only way to yeah, fix cheaters crazy. in video games is to not give them a reason to cheat. And unfortunately, there's plenty of reasons in Tarkov um, right. and a lot of just other games. Add game design, though. Add just game design, like with a flea market, with ban people that play with people that cheat. I think they did for a while, and they might still be, but that just comes back to communication. They're not telling us if they are. They're not telling us how many they've banned. They just as said, far hey, as here's... I know right now, I went and watched a video the other day that was like 25 minutes, and it was like I interviewed someone who hacks in Tarkov, and it was like this guy was like, "Yeah, I think I've been that's doing an awful it. idea." He was like, "He was like, yeah, I've been doing it for like two and a half years." Blah blah blah. Basically, people just pay you to walk them through a map, and you kill everybody, or you like tell them where all the loot is, or you tell them if it's even worth being here. And then you either quickly extract 
and you do this over and over again until they get their 25 million ruble or whatever and they give you x amount of money for x amount of time for you to do this and then yeah you get your account banned or whatever but then you just have eight other codes from the deals because you got 30 percent off for buying four accounts and i think that's a lot of the people. frustration and so like but these people that do rmt trades and go in and pay these people to get them ruble don't get banned that's yeah. the problem and that's the hacker was like yeah it's pretty easy he was like well he was like battle eye sucks and does a really poor job because they need like the source code to ban any sort of cheats they need to like buy it and have it and like own it and there's so many cheat distributors out there that like owning it is like impossible plus like there's like there's like three or four big people that sell cheats and then other people get them and modify all the scripts and this that and the other and add their own touches or their own highlighter colors or whatever blah 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 this that or the other to the radars and shit like that um but he was like yeah so like the people that do this don't get banned so people can get like 100 million ruble for paying you know whatever i'll pay 100 dollars. well some people are really emotionally invested in this game like i said 100 dollars isn't really a lot of money to feel like you've done something right or feel like you have that flex like i know personally when i had like 150 million ruble or whatever the fuck i'm like yeah like i'm like look what's up dude i'll do i'll buy whatever i want i'll run whatever kit i want i'll buy a grenade launcher and run around the map like it's a good feeling and some people ks 23 yeah some people some people can't get that some people can't get that and they will pay money to receive that and that's where rmt that's why rmt is a problem yeah. It's not hard to identify are, the RMTers in the game. All you have to do is sort, are fuel, sort, sort, the, economy. <laughs> sort, sort the flea by highest price to lowest price and then record all the names and then monitor their accounts because I guarantee and you can you, report them now from the, uh, yeah. the flea market, which is what, cool. Why, from, what heard, from what I heard, the most active thing is like people just protecting people that don't have hacks. They like bodyguards, like pr mm. protect Mr. President. Yeah. I'm gonna kill everyone in the slot. Then move me, then move me fifty bucks. I'll run you through seven raids. Yeah, pretty much. You get two hours. We're gonna to go to labs every single raid. I'm gonna kill everybody in labs, and you get any piece of loot. I'm not gonna to touch it. And then I lose yeah. my account, but I have, like I said, eight others. And the people I think that that's part of the frustration, though, is uh, that we used to have that communication, and like they were actively banning RMT, they were actively banning cheaters, and ban now and, they use a and, macro ban them. And everybody was like, okay, you're doing some work. Thanks. And then this time we're all, everybody's like upset about cheaters. And they're like, oh, here's a sale. Cause this always makes it worse. <laughs> so everybody's like, wait, what the fuck? They We've do it every about time. Cheaters. Every time. It's like, yo, I haven't seen a cheater in a while. Must be time for a, for an Must be sale. time for a sale. <laughs> it's, it's coming up on Easter. I think uh, Easter sale. Yeah. The yeah, summer that's sale. A, that's vacation from Tarkov for me. Yeah. 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 So yeah, take five days off. You'll you'll feel good about it. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, we're gonna get close to wrapping this up. Polars. Um, as we get to wrap this up, I'm gonna everyone get that themselves promote themselves a little bit. Polars, what's going on with you? Uh, what's your stream schedule look like? Uh, ever returning to Tarkov now that New World <laughs> New World Beta is over? Uh, yes, we are. We're playing either Saturday or next week. Okay, thanks. Um. So uh, what what can we expect from you? What's what's your what's your plans going forward? Just some gaming. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, probably a little bit more. Um some in between days, Tarkov, New World when it comes out. Yeah, everything. Everything. All right. So uh That's if you guys want, go follow Polars, Twitch I, I posted links. Click those links, go follow him on his Twitch, his Twitter, and his TikTok. Go guys, go do that right now. Uh, catch pullers next time he is live uh thanks for thanks for being here uh thanks for having me yeah no problem um bow tie are you ever gonna return to the streaming well i'm I'm live right now right i I'm know a, you, are. you are you are that's it, it. that's so, his fail it's his fail for three months my my once a year no um i've actually been thinking about at least streaming like once a week here's the thing when i was streaming five days a week i was married but I didn't have a four-year-old either. So, right. um, you know, dad, dad time takes up more time than game time, and that's how it's supposed to be. But right. um, I, I, I miss streaming. I play video games, so I might, I might just start streaming while I'm playing video games. I mean, you play all the time at night, late at night, so I might just start throwing the stream up and doing that, um, throwing a bow tie on at 11 o'clock at night, though, till, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't know. We'll have to see how that works. All right. And you guys... You uh, could do it without uh, pants, though. 
You I'm doing it without pants problem. right now. You're right. Yeah. Poggers. Poggers. Hey, watch, That's like, why you, you haven't gone up and gone B yet. <laughs> That's, That's it. That's why you haven't it's... broken the seal. It makes sense. Um, guys, you can follow Bowtie, twitch.tv slash Bowtie, uh, and he also has a Twitter. So, guys, go go follow Bowtie there. Uh, he is he is the, like he said in the intro, he's that guy that wants to find the perfect mouse setting. Uh, and he wants to min-max everything with his hardware and his his software. Um, so it's uh, he's he's a gamer. That's the term we like to use um, for sure. So guys, go make sure you go check him out. Um, Mr. Mr. King Codex. What about you? Uh, working on video editing. I, uh, it's very hard to keep like a. Uh motivation like I, I don't like a lot of the videos i make but trying to produce more content actively for people to enjoy so they don't have to be there for the stream um stream nearly every day early morning get your coffee ready sometimes very late at night when i really feel like degenerating and uh, ruining my mental health but yeah man just on the active ruble grind trying to get through the uh the new wipe vibes and waiting for some more interesting events to happen yeah all right uh we can see him. You guys can see him on King Codex on Twitch, uh, King Codex on Twitter, and King Codex on TikTok. So, thanks for coming on, Bowtie. Thank you for coming on today. Um, I had a lot of fun. Um, again, we went way longer than I originally planned on. Um, if you guys really enjoyed the podcast, let me know. Um, feel free to join the Discord. Give me some feedback. Um, I would like to make this a regular thing. I don't think we're going to do really long three-hour ones, but I'd like to do it once or twice a month, maybe get a shorter format. If any of you esteemed gentlemen would like to come back on in the future, let me know. I'd love to have you guys. I think you guys have really good insight into the game, um, and I'd really like to make this podcast a regular thing, and we can grow it. And I think it's. Uh, I think we have a unique opportunity. Uh, chat, you can agree or disagree. I just think that there's there's some Tarkov podcasts out there. And, and it's the same people every single time. They're very large content creators. They are are very close to Battle State games. And In bed with that's, them. <clears throat> which is fine. And that's fine. And I like their opinions too. Yeah. I like Pesley's opinion. It's fun like hearing it from other people, cleans. though. It's fun hearing it from but sometimes people that it's also nice. go through it every day. It's, sometimes it's nice to hear it from us casual game players. Um, you know, how, what we think of the game. And I think it gives we have a unique perspective here. So... I'd like to be able to keep it going in the future. So if you guys like Absolutely. it, let us know and we'll do it again soon. Um, let's find somebody to raid. I have some ideas, guys. If you want to mess, if you guys have an idea in the uh, the Discord chat, just let me know. Um, and then I'll over override it and then send them to whoever I want to anyway. Um, uh, Let's see. Um, come on. Let's send them over to my favorite favorite streamer, Deadline. Oh, uh, that's... <laughs> oh, no, that would be hilarious. Um, that's not going to happen. That's Is it? No, I'm not going to ask you that. We'll, is, we'll but, uh, about uh, about a second. Uh, um... Oh yeah, Dad. That's who I was thinking. Dad, that's who I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's. We're gonna. That's a good yeah, plan. Because yeah. he's because he's trying to get that partner grind. So we'll help him yeah. with his numbers. Um. So we're gonna raid. We're gonna raid the Yoinks. He's a cool dude. He's cracked at Tarkov. Um. Let's show him some support. Absolutely. I can't. I don't even know how to fucking Tark. I don't even know how to. Stream. By the way. Just throwing it out there. If any of you are uh, degening tonight, I am probably going to play for a couple hours. See, I would, um, but I got to be up at five, so I am getting in the shower and bed because I didn't even shower when I got home. I'm oh still covered in pesticides. Oh my goodness, this man! All I right. haven't eaten yet today. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't eaten, and I'm covered in pesticides. So I'm getting in the shower and then bed. <laughs> hey, I I feel you, brother. Yeah. I feel you. I did shower though, but. I got it because it was raining, so I got to work a little bit early. Oh, okay. um, guys, so as we go over there, show him some support. Um, whatever, whatever your favorite streamer's emotes are, if you could just type some stuff, just get hyped for for the yoinks. Um, you know, post some emotes. Let's uh, give him some support. 
<laughs> bow tie. Ah, oh, Jesus. Um, and when we get over there, make sure when we raid that you refresh the screen and go to his actual page to count for him as an organic viewer. Um, cause he's really, he's really close to the, to being able to apply for a partner. So I think it'll be really big if you guys can, uh, go hang out. We there. can all help him. We can all help him because that's what the non-degenerate Tarkov community likes to do. We like to help each other. Okay, guys? Hell Facts. yeah. Sinful, you know. Guys, everybody that came in tonight, I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, we'll see you again real soon, hopefully. Um, the bits and the resubs and, and all the new follows. I really appreciate that as well, guys. I will see you guys next time. Have a good night, guys. A pleasure. Thanks. Have a fun.